First up is first up is approval of the agenda. So may I have a mover for the agenda of March 21st? Joanne? Yeah. Seconded by Didn't hear Chris. You. I sorry, I can't see very well. Um seconded by Chris. All in favor? Okay, great. Um, I guess I should have asked if there was any additions to the agenda, but I didn't see any. So hopefully that's okay. Okay, um, item B2, um, declaration of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof. So um, if anybody wants to declare any conflict or pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Okay, that's great. Um, and then um, item C, a reports to be received uh, as information. Um, so we will be uh, discussing um, all of these uh, throughout the agenda, but first we need a motion to uh, receive them. So may I have a mover? Chris, seconded by Sean. Okay, great, all in favor? Okay. Previous minutes, moving on. Um, so we have uh, January 18th minutes. We have the um, February 5th e-poll and the February 15th uh, uh, minutes of the Committee of the Whole. So, um, Lori, do we usually do these individually or can we do them in a group? You can do them in the group, but if someone says... Uh... I have a so student individually, or they, they could even bring up now if they have any changes, they could do that. And then we can maybe vote for them separately if there's that, because some would be amended and some would be as received. Okay. All right. So I have a mover then. Um, and uh, uh, so are there any items people wanted to clarify or any omissions? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Okay, so um, I got a seconder already. So I guess I technically I should have just had a mover. No, no, you're good. So oh, you moved okay. and seconded. Now you can just call the question. Okay, all in favor? Okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, business arising from the minutes. Um, we actually do have business arising, but it's embedded into the agenda. So um, I'll just note that um, there's a few things that we will be discussing as we move forward, uh, specifically like the OL conference update that Jen has provided, the Volt update, um, and there may be a few other things that come forward in our action planning. Um, okay, communications with the board. We have received no deputations, um, none scheduled, and I don't believe we've received any public input, Jen, have we? That's correct. We haven't received any. Okay. Um, so nothing to do in those areas, but correspondence. So um, we actually have... Uh, uh, four letters that are, or correspondence that are all related to um, uh, item F.2, the community hub. So um, at this point, I'm just going to ask that we uh, receive the correspondence and then that we can sort of review it when we get to F.2. But the four items are um, the original note from um, the deputy clerk, we are uh, original request last fall for uh, to be included in the multi-use feasibility study. We also have Lori's letter. Then we have the approval from council um, uh, for the CEO to participate. And then we have an email from a community member um, that I will acknowledge when we get to F2. So can I have a mover for uh, receiving the correspondence? Marie and a seconder. Carol. 
your first. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Okay, great. Um, all right, so we're going to start our strategic plan updates and action items with a uh, what looks like a very interesting presentation um, from Alessia Ferris, our curator of the um, uh, Craigley Heritage Depot. Okay, I'm just pulling up the slides for Alessia, so I'll just need a moment here. So I'm going to follow along on my meeting package then. Or unless you're bro broadcasting. Display. I don't know what this will do though. Can you see that? No, and probably any community members can't as well. Okay, I think I Is there a way to share the screen? Yeah, I have to do it on Zoom. Just one moment. Perfect. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. And maybe you could make it full screen. Yes. You just go down to the little icon on the bottom right it looks like a computer monitor bottom right it might look different for you julia just because i'm doing it through zoom okay that that's fine um... did that make a difference Yes, that's great. Okay. Thanks. Okay, Alessia. All right. So thanks for having me. So I'm going to be talking about a joint project that the museum is working on with the town of the Blue Mountains. So we're working on creating an interactive cultural map um, for our area. So the map will feature cultural, natural, and intangible sites and resources, both present and past, for residents and visitors to view and enjoy. Yes. So I've given you packages. This is more of a short form version of it. The, the slideshow we're going to be talking about, that goes a little bit more into depth with the information in front of you. So we're going to talk about what cultural mapping is, um, the project objective and its outline. And then I'm going to go through some examples of cultural, natural, and tangible sites we have here in the mountains that will go up on the map. Um, then we're going to go through a little timeline and then an outcome and any questions you guys might have after the presentation slide. So cultural maps, um, they provide an, an integrated picture of the cultural character, the significance and workings of a place uh, in order to help communities recognize, celebrate and support cultural diversity for both economic, social and regional development. So in essence, a cultural map will have points of interest with little blurbs on it. Um, it will include a uh, image and the point where the location of the, or the feature is. Um, so our map will include a diverse, a diverse range of points to promote local history. It will include features like the Clark Fruit Black History Museum, Wall of Uplands, schoolhouses, George Bay Fruit Grows facilities, the Mitchell Experimental Farm, uh, churches, abandoned orchards, family farms. So if it existed in the Blue Mountains, we want to add it to the map. Next slide. So the objective of the project is to document as many features and resources that can be found in the Blue Mountains uh, to bring awareness to the many cultural identities and their historical significance. And we intend to allow residents uh, to self-identify and map or document the people, places, and resources that define their community identity and by sharing these stories and narratives that go with, with those uh, identities. Next slide. Um, so over the next couple of slides, I'll be going over the project outline. Um, we're going to look through, look at how the museum is identifying local features, the technology being used uh, to create the map, cultural map database, uh, as well as working with successful partners or building partnerships. Next slide. 
So um, a cultural resource framework was established to identify a broad set of uh, assets in the public, private, and not-for-profit sectors that are cultural resources or features in the town of Blue Mountains. We decided to be broad in our framework as we hope this will give space for public suggestion and submissions. So if the items can fit under the seven categories that you can see on the screen uh, next to cultural resources, the museum staff will take great effort to include it, uh, include the feature on the, the map. So I'm just gonna go quickly over the seven categories and give you some examples of what fits under each category. Uh, so the first one is community cultural organizations. So these are organizations that represents the arts and heritage and ethnic cultural interests in the community. So this could be museum, um, art studios, uh, heritage and cultural committees and groups, even libraries and library boards can fall under this as well. These organizations can assist with gathering informa in information, disseminating the project, and provide a space for communities community to share in input submissions. They can also be added to the map and, and site or as, as resources. Then we have facilities and spaces. So this can include buildings and sites that host cultural activities. Uh, build, buildings can provide space for the project to grow and it can be added to the map as well. So those include arenas, galleries, town hall, community centers. Then we have cultural heritage. Uh, this includes artifacts, monuments, groups of buildings and sites, museums that have a diverse diversity of values, including symbolic, historic, artistic, aesthetic, ethnological or anthropological, scientific or social significance. So the examples of these would be the Marsh Street Center, Craigley Station, schoolhouses, Ravenna Community Center, mill sites, farm sites. Then we have festivals and events. So those are kind of self-explanatory. So we wanna include things like the Apple Blossom Fair, Artsburg, um, Saturday Farmer's Market, the Beaver River Rat Race. Then we have intangible heritage. So these are assets that do not necessarily manifest in a physical form. Uh, they can include tra traditions or living expressions inherited uh, or passed down like oral traditions, performing arts, social practices, uh, and much more. So these can include uh, church choirs, minstrel groups, uh, weaving, knitting, sewing traditions, agricultural practices like apple farming. Then we have creative cultural industries. So these are businesses and non-for-profit groups uh, involved in the creation, production, manufacturing, and distribution of cultural goods and services. Uh, again, it would be like museum, art galleries, farms, art and dance studios. Then we have the last one is natural heritage, um, which includes areas of natural wonders, areas of environmental and cultural significance. So that can include municipal parks, uh, conserv conservation areas like Peace Marsh or Qualcomm, uh, include Georgia Bay itself, as well as the Niagara Escarpment. Can I ask a question? Of course. Where, it's Lori. Um, where would things like Indigenous heritage fit into this? Or so is it variety of spots? Uh, technically, it could fit under both cultural and um, natural, as well as intangible. So Indigenous history, we find, kind of does all three. Um, so each one, it won't be put into specific categories like this. Um, on the map itself, it, on the map, it will just literally be a point with information. This is just to help people give ideas of what we're looking for. Sometimes when you do like a little bit too narrow, you might forget items that could go on the map. And we want to make sure that we're including everything. So yeah, indigenous would fit under both or all three cultural, natural and intangible heritage. Thank you. The so now I'm going to talk about the tool we're using to create this map. Um, so we partnered with the town's GIS system, or team, uh, to use their GIS system to create the map. Uh, so by using the town of the mountains GIS system, um, museum staff will have access to the map through the town servers. So we plan to work with GIS to have our museum staff train on the system so that we can go in and make corrections and additions as long as it's okay with the GIS team. Um, the GIS, GIS mapping combines, combines geographical data with layers of information to create interactive maps. So we, we, the plan is to use the 1872 map, which is similar to the map that's on the screen. This was a little bit later, or earlier, sorry. And superimpose it over top of the current map for the town of the Blue Mountains um, to give it more of a historical feel. Uh, but we do plan to put both newer items, not just historical items on the map. 
So rather than reinventing the wheel or outsourcing GIS to another GIS platform, which some other maps have done, uh, by using the count system, we have better control of the map and it can be integrated into other town maps in the future if the town ever wants to use it for any other type of uh, mapping. Next slide. Can I just ask a question? So where would, for example, Lori's question about Indigenous heritage, how would that show up on a map? Like, so like would we will it... be putting the actual sites up where people can go and visit them. Uh, we will try to, luckily, uh, quite a few of the sites are, are quite large. So we will put it uh, close to where the Indigenous site is. You would click on it and it would come up. So Josh, our intern, has uh, created a great little synopsis of some of the historical sites like Akaranda, which is the Estimate Caves. Um, and it's given more of a general point of reference rather than an exact point of reference. So say buildings like Ellie Shore, when we put up in 1995 that it was built, it will have the specific address that we currently hold now. The indigenous sites will be more of a broader, just because we know that sites like those have problems with people going in and thinking that they can go find their own items. So it will be more of a general area rather than a specific point. Okay, thank you. And we're trying to make it as, as transparent, but also protecting those sites from, from outside people's coming in and going through the stuff that might be there. Um, okay, so the database management plan was created to help all facilitators to better understand the workflow of the project. So the plan consists of the following elements. So we have the data set. Um, this includes documenting the cultural, natural, and intangible features, both historical and present, that can be or were found in the town of Blue Mountains. The sources vary from local history books, local knowledge, and municipal records. Uh, documenting the sources of the description, stories, and images is key to remaining transparent. Um, we hope to promote local authors and assist those who want to learn more. Um, these descriptions will be short and brief, but we're hoping that it might spark an interest where they will come to the library and the museum for further information. Responsibility for updating um, the Excel itself, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, um, will be done by the museum and archive staff. Um, the map update will be primarily done by GIS staff, but we hope the museum will also take part in updating the map physically. The update method, so the museum staff uh, inputs the resources gathered, uh, the gathered information and the submitted resources once we, we put it towards the public into the, uh, into the Excel sheet that is how, housed in a joint folder on our server that both um, the museum and library staff have access to, as well as the GIS staff. So we're hoping to engage community knowledge. This is a forefront to our project. So by allowing residents to self-identify and digitally map the document, um, the people and places and resources that define their community identity, we're hoping it will create a, um, a more stronger foundation for coming to the museum and the library to get that type of information and just let the community know that we have those resources available and that they're available for them to, to view. We have, we have created two ways for the public to submit the project. We have a physical form, which I brought two copies that I can give to, to the board so that they can look through it. Um, this physical form allows them to write down the information, submit the stories, and just give us more of a uh, kind of a credit line so we know where the information is coming from. It also allows them, if they don't want to submit directly to the museum to put in the museum's holdings, they're allowing it to be just put on the map or giving them the option of whether it can go into our archives for in perpetuity or just for the project itself and it won't be used by museum staff or exhibits or just general museum. Uh, and, and do we need, sorry, do we need any um, uh, layers of approval if it's public submitting or like, is there a, a way to okay um, what they, yeah. Yeah, so this one would, the, the physical form would be submitted to the museum. And so the staff would do the fact checking to make sure that yes, the, the information is correct, that the site does exist. Um, we would contact the person submitting just to get a little bit more background information about themselves um, before putting it up. And that it would have to fall under the, um, the seven categories that I mentioned previously, whether it's cultural, natural, uh, community building, all that kind of stuff. It would have to fall under those things. Um, there is no, I would say there's no 
we wouldn't say no to most things as long as it's a part of the Blue Mountains, part of former Colombo Township, um, that it existed and that the information can be verified as long as it fits those criteria and it fits under one of the, the criteria, we would put it up on the map. But the digital, that's what I was questioning. Is oh, that? Oh, oh, yeah. Once I get the online exhibit, so we have an online exhibit platform, um, BiblioBoard, uh, which we have a communities exhibit where you where you will eventually, we haven't done it now, but some of the other exhibits do, you can actually upload digitally. That comes to the curator's email and we go through to make sure that a same as the physical, we make sure it's correct, make sure the information, we've had quite a few people uh, donate digitally that way, especially if they don't live in the Blue Mountains and they can't just come to the, to the museum to donate. We've had it from places like Oakville, even as far away as Australia donating to us through, through that online portal, which is great. Um, but it's, yeah, it's vetted before it ever goes live. We have to physically go into the back end and review it and physically move it from being a donation to the actual site. I have a quick question. Yeah. Now, if someone's identifying something that they don't own on a piece of property that they don't yeah. own, is there a process where you would contact the people that own that property to make sure they're comfortable with being put on this map? I don't know if it, it would, it would depend. Um, most cultural maps are just are just buildings, regardless of if it's a private or a public home. Um, we do that today with, if, if you follow on, on Instagram and Facebook, we do Travel Tuesdays, where quite a few of them are private homes. Um, a lot of our, well, our walk, walking maps and um, walking tours or driving tours, we mo we mentioned that they are private residents and they're not, they're not able to go into them, um, but it is just pictures from the roadway, but no, we would not contact yeah, unless we feel that we need to contact them, but it is just more of a visual setting. That hasn't been an issue with your no, okay. no. And we, I contact quite a few of the other, if you go on to Ray County GIS, um, they actually have examples from other communities. There's Hanover, um, even the Great Roots Museum has done one. And there was another one that's written, they're, they're really great, where all of them are, are public and private buildings. And I contacted a few of them and they just said, because it's more of a outside, you're not telling them to go interview it, you're saying leave it from the outside, it does kind of- And I guess if it ever country. became an issue, you could just take it off. Exactly, if, if, a, if a community member came through and people are for some reason are going onto their property or you know trespassing and they feel we will of course take it down, we don't want to cause any, any problems like that. Well, you know, linking to that, then, if you have like a farm history and with people's names, would you connect with them first if they're going to be talking about your family history here? For museums, we we don't actually do that very often. Like for any of our exhibits, we have family names in it. If the family ever came by and asked us, we no longer, we don't want that. Please take our names off. We will gladly do it. Okay. Um, but for most part, when it comes to museums exhibiting and, and that kind of stuff we do put the names obviously we don't put modern names down or, or modern addresses down um, but the map is a little bit of that that gray zone where as long as you know, it's, it's pretty public record at the moment who, who lives where it's, you can go on to Ontario lands and, and type in an address and pay a bit of money and you can get the whole background of that of that house if you owned it um, I think that's the difference though yeah I mean this is really this is is something kind of important because it is gray area I just I don't know that we have the answers I don't think we're going to have it here I think it's probably just worth a little bit of diligence to understand and in terms of like disclosure on on the site on the map and everything just sort of it's just sort of like a potential liability issue then yeah because we're not yeah. talking about who's living in the house now or the site we're talking right. about the history of the site yeah 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 that's fair I, I I think there are some gray areas that it's more that we just make sure that we understand it, if it's a risk it's a risk and, um but that we're fully disclosed and, and aware of what those might be yeah so it's true that we can that that. Yeah. so now that I've given an overview of the back end um, I'm going to briefly go over the database itself. So we created an Excel where all the information, images, and locations could be compiled. Um, it is equipped with 24 tabs where staff members can write or input um, information. So the Excel, was, the Excel was established to function as a growing document. Um, the 24 tabs are based on 
Um, we used the Collingwood Township book um, where they kind of grouped communities together. So we decided to keep it that way just for to make it easier for us. Uh, the feature descriptions will vary by location um, and information available. So the map and its text are a tourism tool to foster local visitor, local and visitor interest into our communities past and present. Uh, the descriptions that you find will be brief and we are aiming to include community stories rather than historical text. Many visitors to museums, historical plaques or signs and maps do not statistically engage with large write-ups, but preferring condensed descriptions that are more fun and engaging. An image will accompany the write-up. Images will vary by decade. Um, if we can locate an image for the if we can locate an image for the site, uh, for those sites that we do not have images for, we will use the modern building or the empty space that's there. It is our hope that some may see the historical image is missing and prompt them to donate their own image. Um, like with submissions of stories and sites, the public can submit images through the online portal or physically through the museum or solely through the project through the, the donation sheet. We can go to the next slide. Okay. So I'm going to give some quick examples of some sites that would go up. So we have the Craigby Station as a cultural site. Um, it's a great example because it has a very long history. So it has multiple stories. So sites like that where they might have had multiple iterations of businesses, um, of family members living in it, farmers, all that kind of stuff, we would split it up into different sections. Uh, so for the Crimson Station, we would do it the, the three periods of time that it was a train station owned by different train companies, it, as it was during uh, the time as the Depot My Daddy restaurant, um, it's time under the culture or the Craigley community or Craigley Heritage Committee and the museum. And then when BMPL took over running it, then we have businesses like the Carb Rose and Co., which is a cultural site. Um, the building is still present on Main Street Thornberry. So we would talk more about what the business was, but the people who started it and who ran it and why they did it. Then we what have places like, is that? Sorry, what building is that now? It's the hair salon. It's the hair salon. Oh, is it? Oh, right. Marion's. Okay. Then we have the fruit bears, or fruit, sorry, Georgian Bay Fruit Growers, which is a cultural site, an agricultural site. It's in the bottom, you can see it on the left hand side. Um, it is now Thornberry Cidery. So it is pretty neat seeing those the two beside each other and seeing how very little. It has changed, yeah. but it's neat to see that it's both an agricultural developer distribution center, and now it's a different type of agricultural center. Then we have natural sites. So say the Niagara Scarment, obviously this line runs quite largely through our community. So with places, natural sites, we can actually add multiple points for the uh, to feature. So we could talk about it might be the indigenous part of it. It could just be the geological, anything like that. Then we have the shale shoreline. Um, it's a natural and a natural site, but it can have multiple points uh, that we can talk about its creation, the changes it's currently had. Uh, we can also talk about the industries that use the shale oil as well. Then we have the Beaver River. Um, again, multiple points that we can talk about different, different uh, aspects, whether it's biodiversity, the flora and fauna, um, the power that it's created, all that kind of stuff, which is pretty neat. I'm gonna go to the next slide. Then we have intangible features. So that would include things like the Beaver River Rat Race, um, which it has, again, multiple points. As you can see on the map, you can see all the different points on the map where we can put multiple pictures. We can even find, we have a few actual stories from the ones who actually sailed down the river, which are quite fun that we want to add. Then we have things like the Apple Blossom Festival, which is at the bottom there. Um, these agriculture festivals had a big part in our community, and we want to make sure that the ones that no longer happen are still remembered in, in history. Um, this one's quite neat because we have very few artifacts and archival material from the site. So hopefully when we mention this in, in, in the map that people might add pictures and ribbons that they want, all that kind of stuff. 
Then we have this one that's a little bit different. So we are wanting to include people in, in, in this map. So we can take Edith Marsh, who is the, the lady in the white dress. Um, so hers is quite neat because she fits under cultural, intangible, and natural heritage. So her as a person, her writing, and her environmental activism um, with Peace Marsh, it is very neat that she can fit under many different things. And we have quite a few people who do fit under multiple different sections and we want to show their impact to our community. Next slide. So considering potential partners. So the museum is open to having partners join who are willing to assist in the completion of the map. Uh, partners can include groups or societies or just individuals. Uh, so while planning out the process and understanding the technological platforms and establishing an initial listing, it has always been the end goal to have the public involved in sharing, researching, and submitting local history documents, photographs, and stories. Um, next. <clears throat> so here's a little bit of the timeline. So March 1st, uh, we had both GIS and ourselves had access to the same folder. Uh, so we had around 10 sites ready to go with image description and um, location. We have around 75 that currently just have description and location, and we're still working on looking through our archives for the images. Uh, so from March March 1st to uh, June 1st, we will continue to upload and add images that the GIS team and hopefully our team will can add up to the map. Um, we're also hoping that sometime in end of April, beginning of May, we can do public information sessions uh, to help gather the stories. Um, and then June 1st, we hope to do a soft launch where we put up 10 sites where we can have the community then come between June and June and July to give us kind of feedback on things that we, they think we're missing, terminology that they think we're missing, um, kind of the bugs that we want to kind of fix before we do the full um, grand launch at the beginning of July. And hopefully by then we'll have, we'll put 75 up July 1st, um, have that for the summer. And then after the summer, we hope to put at least 10 up each month until we hopefully run out of sites to put up. And that is the presentation. That's cool. Oh, that's really yeah. that's very cool. Impressive. Um, Alexia, have you considered, um, I was thinking that partners, um, wearing my teacher hat, I know there would probably be a lot of curriculum connections, like through the Ontario curriculum. So maybe someone could dig up the connections. Like there, you know, I know in certain grade, they talk about community and like, so K, well, basically grade one to six youth is social studies. And then in grade seven and eight, it switches to history and geography. So like probably there'd be little items in each grade that might have a connection. And maybe as a class project, you could have a keen teacher um, lead their students into possibly submitting something. Yeah. And if we can dig up the exact connections, then we would know which grade level teachers to connect directly yeah. and suggest that connection. That's great. Um, I think, yeah. I, uh, do you want questions get home in five? Yeah. yeah. Chair, Madam Chair. Sorry, what? Can we proceed with questions? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I just wanted, I found it very interesting, the whole concept. I'm just curious as to what triggered this whole initiation of this project mm -hmm. uh, and, and what the town is contributing to. Of course. So in June, um, the historic, uh, Blue Mountain Historical Society uh, Sabrina as our CEO, myself and Tim and Ryan from the town um, met in our garden and talked about um, a joint project with all three groups. Um, at that point, we were talking about it, kind of laid it out. So museum staff kind of just started gathering the information because um, we knew eventually it would go up. Um, there was a little bit of a um, miscommunication between the groups. Um, unfortunately, emails were not re uh, replied to, so the museum staff just continued to, to go along with it. Um, in December-ish, I would say, um, finally got in contact with the Historical Society uh, to get them on board and have them help us write the information. 
Um, as it stands right now, um, they're still working through uh, themselves as a group and coming together. Um, as of now, they they haven't uh, submitted any any uh, information, but hopefully, I've given them a list of fifteen rather than giving them I I gave them access to the Excel that had all the tabs where I said just choose some of the sites the staff had already written down, but maybe not didn't put descriptions on, or if they themselves noticed sites that we had missed, that they could put it up themselves. Um, they need a little bit more direction, so we gave them a list of 14, and hopefully they're able to complete that 14 by the April 17th, I think I gave us a deadline. Um, but as of now, it's just been the, the museum staff writing, collecting the information, collecting the images and the stories. And for the town's part, um, it's just been mostly the GIS system, um, where they're going to do the kind of back end data entry of onto the map, mm -hmm. and we're doing more of the historical gathering of that information. So what do you consider a measure of success coming to the conclusion of this project? Mm -hmm. What are you hoping for in terms of outcomes? I'm hoping that people will be able to view the map, visit some of the more public sites, say like the Ravenna Community Center, uh, Craig Leith Community Center, the station, uh, Clarksburg Black History Museum, visiting our downtown, and then also for a lot of the newcomers coming into our area who want to learn more about the community they've just joined, we're hoping the map might be a good starting point for them, where they now know that, you know, they can come to the library for, for books, they can go to the museum for information. Um, there's actual plaques all around our community. I think we have around over 25 historical plaques throughout the, throughout the Blue Mountains mm -hmm. that they can go and learn more about specific sites. Um, so it's our hope is just that it will bring more awareness to the deep culture that we have here. I think a lot of people aren't aware of the, the mill sites, the agricultural, they just see what, what they see now. And a lot of those buildings unfortunately have disappeared. Most of the mills have, have mm -hmm. disappeared and they don't even know that in their backyard, they might've had a mill. So we're hoping that it will kind of bring them a, I didn't know that was right next door kind of moment and that they will appreciate it more and, and promote it. So will this be a maintenance task? forever like it would be it'd be up to the museum to continue to add or let's just say let's say we've written a um, information about a mill site and it's there and it sits there for a bit and then we have a, a descendant be like hey that was my great grandfather's site here's some more information we could always go in and yeah. change it we can now take the information that we had originally up there move it over to our online exhibit and upload the new story that's come about. And we're hoping that the more people realize maybe the information isn't as full as they once thought, that they, oh, the archives have it, or oh, the, the library has it, that they, they'll donate it so that we can have more and then upload those new stories, whether onto the map itself or onto the online exhibit. So fortunate enough with the way the GIS system works, we can actually link um, the site on the map to our online exhibit. So if you were looking at uh, the Kirkville Mill and you're like, oh, that's so neat. I had no clue Kirkville even existed. They can then click the link that takes you to our community um, community page and see all of the items that are in Kirkville that maybe haven't made it up to the map yet. And hopefully from there they can see, oh, there's more communities that I didn't know existed. And so I, I just have a story, like a neighbor of ours just died recently, Ron Cundy, and he, was 93 years old so my husband got very um close to him and he talked a lot about the last 50 years of history in mm -hmm. the red wing area mm -hmm. and uh and he uh, taped a lot of it so maybe some of that could be stuff that could be added to this storyboard if you like mm -hmm. um because there is a mill just down the road too and he had a store post office etc mm -hmm. where he lived which is no longer there um so there's a lot of that kind of history and there might be other old timers around who have that bank of knowledge and not really aware so yeah because the hope is say like let's say the red ring the, the mill itself it has the small picture and a little description of a story that happened at the mill or a little bit of history behind the mill we can't obviously you know put up the full text of it but they could click the link where that information or even the the audio of, of your neighbor talking where they can then play and listen to learn more more in depth about it. okay and because it's coming through the oh sorry no, go ahead, ahead joanne no go ahead uh, i was just wondering because it's coming through the town 
Uh, does this mean it's secure, like it can't be hacked? Or they have their IT precautions around it? Yes, it's if you if you search up the Town of Blue Mountains maps, you'll see that their GIS system, they have maps where they talk about development, they talk about the natural, I think there's one about the parks. It's the same system that the, the town uses there. It's just now going to be an older looking map, a historical map on top of the, the water map yeah. that they currently yeah. use for, yeah. for, I think they have a parks development. There's a few maps on the yeah. website. So kind of related to that, um, I'm just going to get into the the governance side of it. So do we have an agreement with the town and or the other partners, so the historical society, in terms of who's responsible for what and in terms of giving the information, supporting the information, maintaining it? So we're partnering with their GIS system. Is there an agreement in place that says, first of all, like who owns the data? So we're uploading it. So is that BMPL owned data and it's town owned infrastructure, which is fine. It's just like, I think just, um, I think it would be important for all parties to know. Um, and then I'm thinking down the road. So when we're looking at budget, annual budgets, because the town, this is a resource, the town then has to also have, if there are requirements within the platform that somebody in town IT has to update and make sure that it's always the latest version for our needs because their needs may change. I'm just thinking there's that, you know, um, we should probably draft something and it's it's mutually beneficial for the town and us just to be really clear on those roles. And then, because essentially somebody, somebody new will come in and they'll go, oh, I don't know, what's this thing? Oh, well, we don't need that because that's the library. <laughs> And, you know, there's hundreds of years of, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, just these, when you, when you get into those platform uh, partnerships, it's just really important to be clear on those. And GIS could change too. And so they may decide to go a different method. Right. System, and then how does that affect Right. That? So then we need to be a partner in the decision on what's next or moving and or staying transfer. or, you yeah. know, that just, I think there's just some, um, if we haven't gotten there, we should leave. probably, yeah. We should just outline it. The data ownership, though, um, if somebody's submitting something, I look at it as the same. I would have to review the form, but it would be the same as if you're donating an artifact. Mm -hmm. So it does become the property of the library. Right. Yeah. And, the, and we just have to make sure, double yeah. check that the language on the submission form yeah. limits our donation. And if it's yeah. a digital photo, I'm thinking because something familiar came up with me recently. If you're putting, okay, let's say I had a professional photographer take a photo of something that mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. and I put that up to the the site, I don't have ownership of it technically. Like even though I have a digital copy of it, I wasn't the creator of it. So do we have to have a permission form? Like, are we going to get that nitpicky about the original, like the owner or the the owner of the digital image, do they have to sign a release? So we do have that with just museums in, in general. Like a lot of times it's, they donated an item that it was their parents or or it was an image where they, they're they not sure where it came from. Yeah. By signing over, like in our in our donation forms, it says to your best knowledge, it is your, like you own. You have the right you, to. You have the right, yeah. you have ownership of the object. Yeah. So it is that, that we always talk about, it's that sticky situation where yes, I purchased this item from from somewhere, but then the owner comes back and says, "No, nope, that's mine." How do we how do we work through it? Yeah. So for us, it, as long as the donation sheet is signed where the, the the person donating has says, "In my knowledge, this is my op item," we then take that as. Well, well but also too, the sorry, I would, I would add that then it, it's a different topic whenever you're gonna, when you're making money off of that. Yes. Sure. There's no money being made. This is this is purely a historical sharing of photos and information. So oh, okay. I don't. I, I would highly doubt that someone would be upset that there's a photograph, yeah. right? Because there's that's generally where you run into that, right? Yeah. Regardless, right? There's it's no a very gray area. Copyright. Yeah. It may yeah. actually be quite like proud that there are photos yeah. there. So it should be. Well, it actually is a. It is an issue actually really big issue and and so and the releases are just important just for yeah yeah, I, yeah because the person that you donated to may not make money but the person who clicks a copy of it like oh i like this picture and then creates pillows out of it so all the, <laughs> all the images will be at a low dpi so that you couldn't 
yeah, screenshot yeah, it and yeah. blow it up. Yeah, and we do yeah, the same with our online, our, our online exhibits. Yeah, yeah. We make sure that they're at a low DPI oh, so that okay. just so that people can't just take the image. Some of them are pretty nice. We have pretty nice mm -hmm. ski images that I'm sure people want in their homes, yeah. um, but they have to come to us to get that the high resolution. Yeah. But again, the, these forms, there, there is the option of donating it to the museum and having it in our holdings, but there is the option. So we have found that some some groups, and when we were looking through other other museums who had done similar projects, we kind of looked at the the things that worked for them and things that didn't work. And one of them was that quite a there were some people who didn't want to donate to the museum or to the town, but they wanted it on the project. Right. So they wanted that kind of separation. So we've given the option on these forms that you can either donate it to the museum for their repository holdings, and we put it on the map or they're donating it specifically just for the map. So if for some reason, you know, 20 years, 10 years from now, and, and GIS goes kaputs and, and they're it will disappear, but the information, we will still keep the, the wording because we still have the donation sheet that has all that information. Right. Same with the idea of um, if for some reason the site does go down, all the items that were donated specifically to the museum or that were in the museum and archives holdings, we will always have that information. It just won't be in a math format, it will be in that Excel database that we will still have. And we've been using that database, not only for this mapping project, but for social media posts, for exhibits, for all those types of things that have just helped the staff learn about the, the community. So there is that, yeah, it makes sense for the MOU for it, but we, we don't have to worry about it disappear, like the information disappearing, it just won't be in that aesthetically pleasing map anymore it'll just be in an excel just the hundreds of hours of work that's gone into yeah. getting it into that yeah. Yeah. at least the, the yeah the hours of information gathering has to just, just the, <laughs> the upload part has disappeared yeah yeah that's fair Great. so Sorry, um a quick question yes um, you have in your timelines a soft launch mm -hmm. do you have a communications plan together around this at all are you going to put it on social media yeah like how are you going to get the message of this out people to use so we're going to go through our own social media and our own platforms but uh as well as the the town's communications department we'll let them know um all the dates for even the the april and may when we're doing the gathering of the information we'll let them know so that they can put it on their call outs and then we'll have it on our own newsletter because i think it's really neat so you wouldn't want it to be hidden or you know, buried with all these other we've activities. also luckily have like for the museum side we have um, a couple contacts at radio stations um, a lot of the newspapers so we're, this project will be one of the ones where we hit all of our our marketing points rather than maybe you know smaller projects that we might not hit the, the big ones like the review which most people read or look at mm -hmm. and in person like at the farmer's market in the summer then people you know like face to face you could explain and show them did you did you think you want you want to bring this to council to get that kind of um attention to is that something that you thought about or, or considered a meeting yeah. not yet we did have a meeting with the municipality was it yesterday to talk about all of this okay. um and at that point they didn't want us to to bring it to council um with that said just to go back to the communication stuff too because this is your first meeting carol the way that our website works too um, the media knows where to go to grab. So we'll do at the end of all of our board meetings, we have our key messages. Um, there's also certain pages on our website where you can subscribe. So if there's any updates, so there'll be like a project page for this as well. Why didn't so, the council to be aware of this? Did they say it? Because at, at that point, I think it was just, it's a library-led project and we're still sort of finalizing deadlines and things. That's just sort of our goal for a soft launch. So it's possible we'll meet with them again. Um, but the communications director also just got back from uh, a month off. So I think he's also catching up. Oh, it's just a timing issue. It's not, yeah. you can't do it. It's not it now, also, but maybe in the future. It might also be to what yeah. purpose. They might be thinking, staff are thinking of a, a library project 
council doesn't need to approve it. So but council has many other things they have to, they might, that might be like there's an any not approve it. It's for your information. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Because this has town implications, I would think, yeah. to the community and, and visitors. Yeah. I mean, they're targeting visitors and tourists and new people planning here. No, I think it's a good idea. So the response was not yet. It yeah. wasn't yeah. a no. It wasn't it's a no. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Yes, and yeah. the way the that's communication good. from after today will work and what we talked about is all of our meeting minutes and our entire and Alessia's presentation will go to council for information. So council can pull that information and have either That's a counselor <laughs> to speak to the item or should I be at the meeting, I can speak to it as well. So that'll be the first level of communication between library and town will be through the minutes of today's meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I sent you a chat, Jen. I'm just wondering if you could fix the typo on the top of the page I before. That. I will do it. I couldn't okay. do it in Thank real you. time. I didn't want to. That's all right. <laughs> Um, the so, yeah, I'm just, there are I'm just, some typos in here too, so I might want to okay. it again. <laughs> yeah, I'm just conscious of time. So um, it sounds like we're receiving this for information at this point. Um, yeah, thank you, because it's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And huge kudos to this really great. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Alessia. Can I say, so is there going to be some movement on the idea of an agreement? I think so that's, a good, that's an important point. <laughs> okay, so we should um, make I'm a motion? Sure exactly, yeah, I'm not really sure. I just want maybe just some uh, confidence from Jen and uh, Alicia that uh, they'll take that under consideration and uh, you know move towards something, something in writing so we are clear on okay. ongoing rules. Yeah, okay, that'd be great. So we'll just add that to the minutes then. Yes. We don't need a motion. I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll move on then to the draft board action plan. Um, just a few uh, points. Um, so, uh, and for Carol, so at our last uh, meeting in February, we, we had reviewed a draft um, action plan so we establish an action plan the board does every year and we talked about changing the format so I took the lead in the format that you see today it is incomplete um, and I'm really hoping for some good discussion and um, uh, um, so, you know filling out of um, some of the blank uh, uh, parts of the chart so um, I'm just going to go and look at it on my line and hope, uh, my screen, and hopefully you guys can see it on your screen. But I also wanted to point out the the very first. So, so just to orientate you to the format, um, the goals are along the left. So those are those are the same goals that were established during the strategic plan. Uh, process that occurred with the last uh, board, um, library board. Um, so from what I understand, Lori, we review this once a once um once every four year mandate. We review this strategic plan. And so we'll be doing this at the end of our uh, four year mandate. So but we are working with the goals that have been established. Can I just clarify, um, and, sorry, sorry are, is this supposed to be just the board or is this everything? Yes, just the board. So, okay, yep, thank you. Yeah, so that's the other change is that um, we've asked uh, Jen to pull out the CEO before it was kind of uh, mixed together and we felt that some of the things on there were really not board responsibilities. So this is intended to be just the board. It, it you know, you may say, oh, I don't think this should be in here. That's fine. This is uh, quite a rough draft. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get through it all today or if we're going to need another maybe committee of the whole to uh, to do that. But um, um, just thought we should have. And we do have the majority of the meeting time left to, to do this. 
Um, so in this format, we've got um, objectives, actions, and measures that are aligned to the goals. In some cases, I haven't separated whether they're um, CH1, CH2, CH3, but in other places, um, they have been just because they were already organized like that. So um, just bear that in mind, be, be gentle as you, as you look at this. And then in the measures, um, uh, again, I think we need um, more time to really think about how will we know if we're successful. Um, the one other thing I wanted to point out is the very first objective, maximize use of current space. This will be the first time you've seen this. I think the benefit of using a slightly different approach is it seemed to jump out at me that um, when we talk about um, expansion um, and facilities gaps, um, that we really want to um, be able to assure council that um, we're doing everything we can to maximize our current space. So um, that's there also for your, your comment. So I don't know. Yeah, sorry, Laurie. Yeah. No, I think that's an excellent addition. My only question is, um, uh, the, I guess the timing. And so we need to hear from Jen about uh, how should we go about reviewing the current utilization, identifying options to maximize space and kind of, you know, is that something that can be done in the next, you know, whatever timeline, this is this is this year's plan. So that's between now and December. I guess that's a question we have to ask you at all of this. Who's doing what and when? Yeah, yeah, and maybe I think it'll will be a bit iterative, but um, you know, mm -hmm. maybe maybe the next version needs a timeline and responsibilities. Good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think it's an excellent addition, Julia. I think you're quite right. Yeah. Thank you. So how do you want to go through this? Um, uh, some of it is familiar, should be familiar because we would have seen it last month. Um, this is this is uh, the CH goals. So um, on one page, which I think is reasonable. I don't think we want to overcommit. Could um could you move it up the page a little bit, uh, Julia? Uh, sorry, uh, Jen. Jen. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I have a question. If we were to add roles and responsibilities, though, would it be specific individuals on the board because this is the board's action plan, or would it be a matter of identifying if it's shared responsibility? Is that what you meant? What I yeah. What I yeah. Sorry. What I'm meaning, it's, I mean, it might say, you know, CEO and board. Um, so even review current utilization, identify options to maximize space. Well, I think that's mostly the staff, a staff role. Um, so, and that gets into, we have tried to separate this from board and yeah. staff. Uh, so we may find ourselves having to merge it, or we may just have a column that says, you know, CEO. I don't know. Yeah. It's all new for us here. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think, I mean, I know we were trying to get it approved or it's on the agenda to be approved, but I, I don't think, I think we want to have a good plan. Um, we were, you know, the last year's one, as I mentioned, we, we felt it was a bit of a, you know, included some very operational things. So um, if we have to take another month to get this right, I think that, that is not a problem. No, I agree. Well, um, the other these will, yes. will need an action, like what I consider an action plan. You need to figure out, you know, review current utilization. So how are you going to do that? Uh, I think that's what Lori's striking at there. Uh, I don't see any of us at the board sitting here and walking around and doing a space assessment uh, and trying to figure out, you know, is the current activity in there working or does it need more space or less space? So I don't know how we would go about having it done. Um, yes, the staff, I think, are best positioned to 
know how well things are running in there, but they also might have biases too, because whatever. What I'm well, we could. Is this is a CEO yeah. item. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it could be. Fine. Yeah, it's your item, but you, you know, our action is to maybe request the CEO to uh, coordinate a, a, a utilization review that considers program space time. Are there any members um, who can comment on whether the, um, did we not do a space needs assessment, I think in 2019? Mm -hmm. um, so is this a matter of, we need to update that particular document? Before time, so Laura and that could know. be something I can mm -hmm. investigate more. Um, Laura, I know a study do you remember that. that? Um, well, we weren't uh, on. We were um, back in 2019. That was more about um, renovating the museum and uh, set, you know an LES. So because um, we thought we had council support at that point for. Uh, some of those adjustments. So I'm not, no, I don't think it's the same thing at all. Um, but I mean, I think the point is, is there anything from the staff perspective you can tweak <laughs> to be make better use of the space we have? Um, so this is definitely a staff item, not a board item, uh, which also brings me to the cut. We're looking at these as board and CEO, but they may get merged again. Because there is an awful yeah. lot of work. I mean, this is a perfect example. This is a board. We're concerned about this as the basis for gaining uh, understanding and support for building needs. Um, but we aren't going to be the ones, as Chris said, walking around doing this stuff. Yeah. This is actually really timely, too, because um, just as information to the board, we don't have enough office space. Um, we haven't operated with a full staff complement in a few years just because of mat leaves among, you know, retirements, other things. So come the summertime, this is going to be the first time that all of our full-time staff are back working. Um, and so these are conversations that staff have just been having in terms of how do we solve this problem? Do we move to a hybrid work environment is, and have shared workspaces? Is that even feasible? but we haven't really looked at it as we're just simply outgrowing our space. It was more, how do we make this space work? Um, and you're so, right, you guys are sitting on top of each other now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I could, I had a, a hard time conceptualizing this, but now it's sort of, these are things that I could see falling into, whether it's a staff report outlining um, how we're currently using our space and simply identifying these are the ways we we've, we've considered making it work, but there may be certain areas Maybe you need that a we can't. Portable and put some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. else made that joke. Mm -hmm. All I can hear. Yeah. So I'm uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But that Sorry. would show the cancel that we don't have space in well, it. Well, and and I think a lot of the time too we focus on even just the public space, which there are issues that we have identified and can be further investigated and put into another formal report, but it really does go beyond that. It's not just the public space, it is the staff space. Yeah. And some of the program statistics can feed into this too, because yes. if the community wants more, well, we can't deliver unless we have more staff and we don't even have enough space for our current mm -hmm. staff. So. I think it's time to stop compromising. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm happy to sit down with you, Jen, and and sort of draft out how you could go about this. Uh, I've got some ideas, um, and maybe if we pull out that 2019 report and see if there's anything in there that we can start with, but I think we can keep it fairly. A high level. Um, uh, so I'm I'm thinking we could rewrite this auction to say you know direct staff to complete a a, a a a utilization review 
that addresses um, program space and trends, office office space requirements, options, um, and next steps or something. Like we keep this fairly simple. Um, and then we can worry about what the measures are maybe after. I mean, Carol, when we get to the, um, uh, and just for your information, when we get to the part on the CEO, uh, where's our statistics? Oh, that's in your report. Yeah, I think it's CEO the last service one. update. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of numbers there. And um, this, this board also wants to make sure that those numbers and measures align to uh, the objectives. Um, and goals that we have too. So there's an opportunity to sort of um, realign, I think, how we're measuring it. But the first step is to figure out what the action is. Yeah, I think in this case, the measures aren't those statistics because you're really looking at gaps. And what yeah. you're looking for is what restrictions do those gaps cause? So yeah, we could probably expand our programs, but we haven't got the staff to do it or we haven't yeah. got the space to do it. So it's different measures that you're looking here than those ones that you've listed there. Yeah, well, we might be able to do something that said like office space is, you know, at 110% or something because somebody has to bunk in with somebody else or somebody goes into uh, Jen's office when, you know, she's she's not in it. Uh, to use well, it. We have to go with the hybrid model and how that limits things too. You know, staff haven't got access to that person or the public doesn't have access to that person. So that to me is the framework that you would kind of look at that, but that's my view. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, so is there a working at home allowed now and then it's all going to change? Is that sort of the direction it's going in? Yeah, like right now, for the most part, we're all in person. You know, should somebody be sick, but well enough to do something from home, we allow it. Yeah, but, but they're no not formal... doing, yeah, you're not doing like three days a no. week in the office, two of them. Sort of they just have a couple of people coming back from that leave, so there's been gaps. There's also, there was a report recently released by the Ontario Library Association, and it was a survey they sent out um, to, to ask public libraries, both urban and rural, how they approach uh, like a hybrid, work space um but the results were kind of inconclusive because it basically said nobody's on the same page there's no one model that fits every library so you have some libraries that only management can work from home you have other libraries where um you know maybe some of the programming staff can do program planning from home but deliver the programs in person you have some staff that just working from home is not an option. They don't want to do it. So it's there's no one model that works. Perhaps, uh, like I would say, you talk to Sarah at HR at Town Hall, because she's, she's developing the same program. Yeah. So why regroup it again? You can, because we have a multitude of different, different work that happens at Town Hall, right? Yeah. Like uh, if you're a water operator, you can't very well work from home, right? And it's the same with it's, simulation. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. or, or still cloud driver. Hard to do that. <laughs> all, right? So there's the same kind of complexities. So yeah. maybe Sarah has something that can help you in that. Just saying. Yeah. Because I know that's something that she is or was working on, on whether, or maybe it's already been implemented. I'm not sure. So just food for thought. Yeah. But I think that's probably something the board would want to uh, have input on too, if you were changing or adopting that policy, right? So th that's, uh, if you were, you know, moving to a work from home policy, um, that would be something you would bring back to the board, correct? So uh, that could, yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm hearing there's some agreement that we need to maximize use of current space with the action and the measures um, we need to tweak a bit. And I just also go back to the, that 2019 um, assessment, because at that time, we also did uh, the gap analysis, which was 
what are the services we could provide? We had the space for it. And the one that comes to mind quickly for me is the teen service. I mean, we don't really have um, a significant service to teens because we have no place for them to go. Um, so you, what could you do to accommodate teens in either of the two buildings right now? Pretty much nothing. <laughs> yeah. So there is some uh, quite a bit of data, I guess, in the background, um, starting with the gap analysis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the only solution is meet them where they are instead of them coming to us, but that's not that's oh, not yeah, you're just gonna the problem. Mm -hmm. Saunter up to a group of teens. <laughs> Saunter yeah, yeah. up. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the only sort of quote free space you have at the moment is the library board room. And that's booked a lot by different groups needing yeah. meetings and stuff. So it's, yeah. you know, you can't really move a bunch of staff in there and basically eliminate the only meeting room you have. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not very big. And so if you're looking at something with mobility involved with the teens, this wouldn't fit. Yeah. Oh, no, you yeah. wouldn't be able to put teens in there. I was thinking you could put maybe a couple of staff members in there, but then you completely lose the use of that space for anything else. And I think yeah, it's pretty yeah. heavily booked for other things now. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, do we want to try to wordsmith this now, or should we just go through the whole document and and then if we have time, start to to wordsmith it or book another session? A working um, group. A working or a committee group would work better for wordsmithing. Yeah. That could take a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, I think a working group is definitely better. I, I yeah. feel like identifying what we feel are the board, so the big buckets of board actions, that's I think that's because I think we're still I think we're still in a in a, a, a combination, but and that's where the wordsmithing will help. But, um, okay. Okay. All right. Um, the next one is about the need for library expansion. So, um, uh, this is something very important um, for us, and I'm not sure whether we've given thought to the timing that we'd like to, to take something back to council. Um, because right now, really the only action recently is that the CEO is now part of the multi-service. Uh, multi-use feasibility. Yeah. Multi feasibility study, but we're not 100% sure that that is going to be the answer for us, right? We just want to be there in case it turns out to be, but. Um... I would imagine council would want to see that study before making any decisions about, not to say but... that we can't advocate for it, but that study, the anticipated timeline is it should be finished by the fall of this year. I'd, um, sorry, I'd say that you're 100 percent right because then it's just ever it's just that continuous we have of, of excuses not to proceed with anything. Yeah. So I think in my opinion, it would be it'd be a better case to, of course, you know, look in on the back end, look in on things, and then whenever that also used to be because the feasibility study is it feasible for us to build an 85 million dollar pool? The answer no. And then we say yeah, but we can build an expansion on this library for two and a half million dollars. We can use the DCs we already have to get it done. I mean, that makes it like easier. Like, well, I wonder what the where the hard choice is here. Sorry. But do we need to continue to hit council with the fact that we need more space and give the reasons for that? Or should that all be part of that pitch of once they've had the feasibility and this is now we come in with saying here are some of our options around that? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I would think in order to say here are some of the options around that, you would have done this preliminary work. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So I see it all very much connected. Just the only yeah. thing is that the preliminary work that's already been done years ago, I think, where there's already... This has happened already a number of times. Yeah. They're all just so there's, you know. Yeah. yeah. So there's drawings, specs, and all that stuff. It didn't have to be done again 
in today's standards, but inherent in cost. So I think I would now listen to all of this. It occurs to me that what we don't have is a formal articulation of what we need. So we have the gaps and they're they're varied, but I think as a board, we haven't sat down and said, okay, here's the 50 gaps. Now that we understand the community and where we're growing and population age, et cetera, here are the top 10 things that we need to address. So we keep saying youth, you know, okay, so what ages are we talking about? And what does that, what are those, you know, again, it's not gonna be right down to the, we need five, you know, this, that um, item, but, what are the types of activities? Because if we have that, that's the only thing, that's the only way we can participate. Well, not only way, but it's a way to participate much more effectively with the multi-use study to say, okay, if yeah, if we if we had a pool, that would be really great. What we, you know, what we could do is X, Y, Z. So it just occurs to me that we have multiple things, but what we haven't pulled together is a Here's the things that we feel are we cannot deliver under this. Yeah. And I so agree. it needs to be delivered somewhere else. It and it may be in five different places. It might be, in, but these are the things that we need. And then we as a board know that's okay, this is what we're looking to do. And so and and help as we're going through it, whether the the feasibility study can address all some or none. Because if it can dress some, we still have an issue of what else do we do, right? So I still yeah. think council doesn't really understand that piece either, and, and I'm not sure we're even clear on that. Piece. Yeah, I think there, there's very. That's why you say I think I I feel like this is a next step for us as a board is to really solidify what we see as the priorities of expansion yeah. for for expanded services, and why so, it can't be done, and why yeah yeah and the current resources and there's enough work that's been done. Um, it's really just pulling the information into in one, one place. Yeah. So working group. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can take I can take a next stab at this with with our discussion. And then if we have a, a, a working group where we where we look at it, um, just to highlight, though, the identification of options that was intended um, uh, for us. And it's not an either or, but um, so that because we we got into a bit of hot water really when we went and said we want another facility in Craigleith. I mean, we do want another facility in Craigleith, um, but we had to pivot a bit and say, well, okay, we we maybe be part of a multi-use, um, but we also um, have the option of expanding on our current site. So at some point we'll need to show the different options. Um, and if we get nowhere fast with the multi-use or with the Craig Leith, I mean, that may be our next best option is to, um, to know what exactly we, we can do with our current site, so. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It would be interesting to see too from a municipal perspective is, and it would, I, I would have to go through all of plans, but has the municipality identified uh, lack of youth engagement as a priority? And so is there a way where, okay, if we know for expansion, one of our reasons is we don't have a space for youth and we're excluding that demographic, then do we need to work together on a strategy to engage youth? And who does that? Well, obviously the library would be, I mean, I could be biased because I am a librarian, but the, who would do that? Who does youth programming? Who, it would be the library. So it may be a matter of, it could be a collaborative effort, but it's like really pushing to show that we're all working together for the same and I know that's been talked about before. I know Sabrina's mentioned that before, but I haven't uh, seen anything in the town's plans though to indicate that the youth have been the target. Uh, for well, any, it's any... sometimes a talking point, but <clears throat> then the next part would be municipally. That's then they want to, you know, waste three hundred thousand dollars in a study to figure that out. Huh. Yeah, I know. So, which this guy is sick and tired of mm -hmm. throwing money, good money after bad. For consultants and studies, right? Like yeah. we know we already have the people that can put the information yes. together. 
which you guys or you all did very well with as volunteers, that should really show what can be done. Well, and the without staff spending. have a lot of resources too. Yeah. They should be putting things together too. Yeah. So and we can always tie it back to the values, mission, and vision of the town of Blue Mountains that we can prove that, that they dovetail with our goals dovetail with their goals and see what you want. We want it too. Let's work together and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Well, the arena could be another site for a lot of activities, but I also happen to know the arena is a lot booked up there too. So mm -hmm. it's a need in the community. Mm -hmm. What I don't know is uh, there's been talk, and I don't know if it's just linked to the multi-use uh, feasibility study, um, the campus of care, like they were supposed to talk about a recreation area in that area too, somewhere. Um, and I would think that would make sense also then to consider youth as. So that was a, I can clarify that. So that's what happens. That, that very discussion is what happens when staff come forward, get thrown in the bus. When, when Ryan Gibbons came forward and record and made that it, like as an option. For okay. that land. Campus care was even considered, right? It was that land. It could be a, a facility, right? Yeah. And because it was an option, it's not his fault, but he brought it forward that it, you know, something could be built there. Yeah. But there was never a plan. There's never been anything like that. It was just, it's kind of like one of those things where it's like time to stop throwing things out there like, hey, we could do this, because then everybody takes it, residents yeah. take it as being the word that, oh, well, then where's the new arena going to get built? That's what I've heard. Well, there isn't going to be a new arena. Okay. The one we have is plenty fine and far, far, far away from outliving its lifespan. Yeah, so we don't need it when then. Yeah. So, but that's what happens. Is it one so, thing gets said in the public forum and then it's forever just cast out there like ripples in a pond? <laughs> <laughs> Campus of care, my plan, but. It's just ironic we're talking about it now because when I went to the the project webpage, there was some work done and then it ended, I think, last year and there was no like I wasn't sure what the status was on that particular project. But we're waiting for the for the developer to sign it on the dotted line and get going. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we kind of thought there'd be shovels in the ground by now. <laughs> so that's oh, the, hopefully like, if we are moving no, forward no, through that's that's on Sorry, where the old truck it. was on the outside of town. Remember where the old yellow truck heading towards yeah. Goldsmith? Yeah, yeah, you can see it from the You know where Goldsmith field. is? Just on the field. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a big field there. Yeah. It's divided by a water course. Yeah. yeah. Is it on the north side or south side of 25th? So the, the campus care is going to be on the south side of yeah. that okay. water course. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Julia. You're, no, the, the yellow truck's gone, so don't use that as your. Well, I'm just thinking we're getting getting lost in what because these yeah, these yeah, things yeah. are part like we have to depend a bit to, on the town. So maybe we could move forward and focus on some that are solely within our ability mm -hmm. to. Uh, yeah. Um, really? yeah. Can I just jump in with a couple of comments? Yes, please. Um, I pulled out a file um, and I'm looking at the gap analysis again, which okay. uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure which year this is, but I did get a really good job of identifying, like, for example, makerspace. So what does makerspace mean? Um, what does it entail? What's a good description of it? Then the current gap in needs. Um, and then what those gaps and needs mean in terms of space needs. So for example, this one says a room approximately 400 square feet or larger is needed for a maker space, space to meet the types of technology, a proper circuits would be required as well as additional heat loops. So it goes on with quite a bit of information. Well, that's good. And then part of the question is, well, can any of that be accommodated or getting back to your initial suggestion was what could we do with the current space to address any of these? And it goes to you know updated children's sure. space, gathering rooms, programming rooms. So it addresses all of those needs. And so first question is, is there anything we can do with the space we have to try mm -hmm. and start to address some of them? So that's your first um, goal yeah. along there. And then the next one is, well, um, so if we do need, if we want to make a space, we need approximately 400 square feet and these other things, 
where could it be accommodated? Is that in addition to LES? Is do we get another building in Craigley? So you can start to build out, you know, the options that way. And then the other thing that I have is that whole file where we actually started to draw up um, physically options for how this stuff would fit into the facilities we have or renovations. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so I have all those files um, available. Did we have a consultant help us with that? Um, we did have a consultant. Um, it was a bit of a mixed bag. Um, they, they, I mean, we've got, you know, like full, you know, full study yeah. here on, you know, stuff, uh, including pricing, which I, I know Sabrina wasn't very happy with some of it because he, you know, they were using figures she, she thought were um, not relevant up here. <laughs> they were Toronto consultants. Um, and they didn't go over too well with council at the time, partly because they, the style seemed to be more, we know what to do. We're going to tell you how to fix it as opposed mm -hmm. to a cooperative. Um, but, you know, we moved on from that and, but have a lot of information around the kinds of options that are available. So I think it's just a matter of taking a look at that historical stuff and updating it and be able to say, this is, you know, we can tweak stuff here now. We've done our best in tweaking, um, but there's all these, this is a bucket of other things, but we simply cannot do without space. What kind of space do we need? Well, if we want a Craigleaf facility, you know, based on the uh, Ruplo standards, don't go with anything less than 10,000 square feet. And, you know, and then if you want to do a, a you know, something else at LES, then these are the sorts of ways you can um, fix the building that addresses issues like our rotting pipes under the bathrooms or making them accessible. So you can also solve some of the building problems within the context of a larger uh, build. So I think we have a lot of information. It's just a matter of getting our heads around it and trying to speak to council um, about that. It also strikes me, when I look at some of the stuff, this looks to me more like two years worth of work. Maybe. <laughs> Not just one year. <laughs> so we may end up writing both, you know, sort of a, 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 an overall plan sort of for the balance of this board term with some of the key milestones we want to hit within the next couple of years. Yeah. I like that, Lori, because it also signals how a lot of this work was done like before our term and how yeah. this is such a historical long journey. Uh, so, yeah. and again, council's all new too. So this is history they might not. Not all of them. <laughs> Well, there's, a <laughs> yeah. and there's one there's one that pontificated that this has been on the books for a long long time that didn't support it yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so it, again i think and so Lori, i'm so glad that you have all of that i was just thinking about the gap analysis i didn't realize we had the other but that's it exactly i mean re, as a new board we need to review that and say yes we yeah. agree here are our priorities and then say to council this and is what this is where we're at and yeah. you know because we also have the decision of we have development funds we have you know are we you know I, I know nobody wants to do this but you know do we need to raise money to do something but those are things that we have to go and I totally love your point Lori about it's two years worth of work <laughs> <laughs> thought that might give us some comfort yeah <laughs> yeah that, this isn't something we're going to do by next May. Friday <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else we want to discuss on this uh, page before we move to the next one, which has nothing and um, uh, under it for the board? It has a lot in the CEO mm -hmm. uh, plan. Well, I think it makes sense that there's nothing under the empowering services because that really is uh, um, operational. And that also sort of begs the question of, at, we should probably put these plans back together again, um, and then we can see clear more clearly what is purely CEO. There's really, frankly, very little that's purely board because everything you're doing as a board is supported by the CEO. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did wonder though, um, because it seems to me that we have an opportunity and maybe a responsibility. Um, I was thinking about, I, I was looking at the um, Ontario Library Association 
statement on school book banning and restricting books. It's fairly recent. Um, and I'm wondering if something we could do is to endorse that statement or support it or educate our community on why we support it or um, adapt it to our, um, like post it uh, more publicly. And I thought we should have a discussion about, about that this diverse glam services, because that to me would be a really important board responsibility if we want to be proactive, right? Like they're, they're what is it they're mm -hmm. calling it? Get loud. They're asking everybody to get loud. So right. um, how do we get loud about, or do we? I mean, Lori, you have, you know, all that experience with the OL, o, o, OLA. Mm -hmm. Um, so what's the name of the document you're talking about? Um, they have a fairly new statement on school book banning and restricting books. It was signed last fall. So it's school book it banning. Out. So it's really about the, um, the school sector. Um, is there anything in that that addresses the public library sector? And Jen, uh, you can do that better. I think it does because it's talking about restricting books. Like all young people, I pulled this out, all young people deserve to not only see themselves reflected in the books they read. Well, then I stopped writing it down, but I, I really like that. Yeah, we do have some policies around um, that kind of stuff already. And I, so I think we'd have to take a look at what we already have written. And is yeah. there any modifications we want to make to that based on you know current situations? Um. I think it falls, yeah. falls into our policy review question. I think we have the IFLA station, statement yeah. on intellectual freedom, and we've got, get what all the policy names are. But do no, we I, need to? Well, our collections policy would have mention of, I mean, we could, when we revise all of those policies, we could make sure that they're inclusive of sort of that very powerful language. Like they already yeah. cite a lot of these principles, like, mm -hmm. Um, and mm -hmm. I think part of the accreditation process as well was having a some sort of equity, diversity, and inclusion statement, like a commitment to, which sort of feeds into some of this book banning um, narrative. But from a policy level, there would be a couple policies. Yeah, Laura, you're right. That would mention. But but my point is, okay, we have the policies, but where are we? getting loud if if we're yeah. being asked to get loud what does that look like like does it look like an information night where we talk about that i i mean i don't know do, do we or is that it? really waving a red flag and then people will come and have a yeah. that would be my concern is um we don't really have issues around here right now about that kind of stuff and you don't want to you know wave a red flag and attract direct attention to that. I think we need to have a good policy framework where yeah, we, exactly. we know how to respond. Um, and then, yeah, so we're in a position to to deal with it if it comes it's up. Easy. But right now, I think we, uh, yeah. you know, we've got a good policy framework. We just maybe update a couple of things based on what you're seeing in that other, that new document and then be prepared if something happens. I have a question. How do we know that we don't have an issue? Yeah. <laughs> um, my perspective would be we have not received any challenges to our collections. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't received any challenges to our programs that I'm aware of. Um, we haven't received any public pushback against the way that we advertise or um, advocate for certain things so for example at the end of february it was freedom to read week 40th anniversary we did a very very progressive online campaign um we launched our own book sanctuary um there was a lot of we did a lot it wasn't just one random social media post hey it's freedom to read week um it was a whole full-blown public campaign and we didn't receive any negative feedback toward that and very progressive language was used. I would say, so I've had my granddaughter looking at the kids' books and use some very progressive 
kids' books. I was wondering if you'd ever had planes. And I think they're great. I think it's fantastic. But we, like, for instance, the, my daughter comes from Georgetown. There's nothing like that in the Georgetown. Right. Uh, but it's like my two dads or how, how I live with my two moms. Like, it was great. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just asking the yeah, question because question. it's all good to say that we haven't heard anything. But if you have marginalized people in a community mm -hmm. and, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So just yeah. because somebody doesn't complain doesn't mean that everybody feels like they're well represented, like they are supported. So I don't know what the answer is, but it's sort of it it might be it might be part of our survey process about, you know, right. are there materials that you feel, you know, would you've heard of that you would recommend or that, you know, do you, I don't know what the questions are, but so that just sort of triggered that. But I think, Julia, what you're saying is, as a board, do we need an objective that is that how do we like actively support inclusive and have yeah. an objective to actively support? Not Would that be do we, in the action plan? Do we I have a responsibility? Yeah. What I'm wondering is, do we have a responsibility to um, educate as well but i'm very see i did not know you did a freedom to read campaign so to me that's exactly the kind of thing i was saying shouldn't we be maybe doing these kinds of things so are there uh, there's other things that that staff are doing that align to this um 21st century literacy um and diversity uh how do we as a board ensure that we know about them and are they enough? And maybe they are, because I hear you, Lori. I mean, it's a good point. But Joanne's point too is how do we know we don't have a problem? And what about all those people that haven't a clue and but are vulnerable to um, perhaps some alternative voices should they be uh, raised? I don't know. I just... I just feel the need to ensure that we're on top of this before something happens that we're not uh, expecting. I would say that I think that I, I absolutely, I think our policies are really sound because we did go yeah. through this. We had time to make sure that we, we felt that was there. Um, maybe it would be more as individual board members as, um, and I totally meant to do this because I saw the posting about the band book sanctuary and I was there like, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like, I was going to do a LinkedIn post on it. Um, totally forgot. I think you sent us an email though. Yeah. And, and maybe that was, yeah, but I, I meant it, you know, so maybe it, it is more um, individual or as opposed to like a formal. Uh, yeah action action in the ceo action plan i'm not sure if i'm really answering this but there is mention again of outreach strategy so our manager of um, community engage engagement has returned to work and that's something she's working on um, and it's an annual outreach plan so it's just essentially committing to annually identifying barriers to library service through different methods while they won't specifically be mentioned mm -hmm. um there may be some examples but it's that's the purpose of that rule okay so yeah so maybe bringing them back together it'll be a long sheet i'm i'm assuming yeah. but maybe the measures maybe the measures are just one column of measures and it's sort of board the objective should be the same. The actions for the board would be different than the actions for the CEO, but maybe we could have the same measures that we would then, I don't know, I'm thinking out loud. So maybe it doesn't have to be like two sets of objective action measure. We could combine them. Sorry about that, Jen. I know you pulled them all out, but. <laughs> okay. I, I actually found it helpful when I was working on my plan the, the way that you had it laid out, I think maybe we thought about it differently. Um, maybe if we look at mine too, it might. Yeah, we know. can do that. Um, okay, so let's look at OE. Um, we have OE1, OE2, and OE3. Now the, and, oh, and OE4 and 5. 
And this, they are separated at this point. So, somehow they all uh, lined up by the individual goals. Um, and I think these are a little bit more um, board related. Um, so we have talked about revising our board and CEO evaluation instruments. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that would be simple. Yes, no. If it, is it done? Yep. Um, oh, and we have filled our board vacancy. Yay. Yay. So you can have it. <laughs> um, but we still have to, and I know it's on the agenda. Is it? It's on the agenda, is it not? Is it not? Yes. Um, for uh, what kind of orientation um, care we need to um, give to Carol, because we all took a part in the provincial orientation. Um, I don't know if there's any comments on, on these. Well, I did notice that we have one in here that says CEO to provide. So we've already kind of blended in yeah. some CEO stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These would seem mostly are more ones that um, we are we are participating in something mm -hmm. like the um, market survey. And that's that's uh, coming in from the outside. So we will be responding to something that's generated elsewhere. Yeah. We... Yeah, I was just wondering if we wanted to set specific, like, you know, a specific measure is, you know, each board member attends at least one training or, you know, and we identify an OLS or whatever each year. I don't know if we want to be that specific, but it just feels kind of general. And if there's, you know, specific things that we want to make sure that we're on top of and we want to divide the, so that not everybody's going to the same seminars or the same information session. I was supposed to be on the governance one yesterday. I forgot to. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So I know we're not just sort of wordsmithing, but I would say that any training or any conference attending or anything would always be linked back to the strategic goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, how was so the boot camp this Except year? Except for orientation. Except for orientation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, we went through a lot of orientation, trust me. Yeah. It may be, do they only hold them every four years? Or is it an annual thing? Yeah, there's definitely more in-person training opportunities through OLS um, or even council. Like the clerk will put together training about ethics and parliamentary procedures, and that will that will be every four years. But the, those there are resources for boards that are recorded, and I think some of them are listed on the orientation page. It's just if you're a midterm appointee or appointment, um, your in-person opportunities will be limited. There aren't really any that I'm aware of from an external source, it would just be me. <laughs> but well, I, And I believe some of the orientation, the obligatory stuff that we've all had to do in terms of MFIPA or AODA or health and safety are all things that have been recorded. So the stuff that was done jointly with council, I think those are just, sorry to say it, Carol, but so you're just gonna have to sit through these videos. <laughs> so I, I don't know as I had in-depth training and all that in my previous career. Right, so... Occupational health and safety was sort of my life. <laughs> right. yeah. But like the FIPA and all that. So I don't know if that still counts as being current because that was two or three years ago, but I was very much immersed in all of that. Well, I know the council one that we had, that was taped. Was yes, it, it is. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. yeah. So we why don't we, just, we come to that? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. we're touching on that agenda okay. item already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I was just going to suggest. Um. Okay, and so is there is the TBM market? Are they doing it? They're doing a compensation review now, correct? Once the budget is passed, once the budget is finalized, then that will start. It's a okay. budget item, <clears throat> so wait till after April. Then there will be just... probably a whole RFP. That's not cheap. It's going to be. It's what they do, though, yeah. right? Yeah. So 
but I make sure to 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 ask the questions that the library and staff, library museum staff are included in that study. So we know that. So there's nothing to really go after. It's just the typical hurry up and wait. And you'll probably be included in interviews and things like that too, from whatever consultant is. It's... Yes. The only thing is, it's in the MOU, but I don't know what will happen between when the budget's passed and when they hire a consultant. But I don't think it'll be, I, I don't anticipate that we would have time to reopen the MOU. No, no I don't think but, that's, I don't think that's in it. It's just, if you're part, you know, because of the MOU, you're part of it anyways. Right. So I wouldn't really okay. put too much into that because, well, as you know, we need to be given due notice at the MOU so you can be discussed, so. Right. Yeah, so it'll happen when it happens. Okay, so we think we're in good shape to be included in this. Sean, our, sure our, that, um, yes. our sure magic, that, uh, yes. I've been assured that, yeah. That's great, okay. Um, OE2 talks about our policies. So, um, you know, we do, when did, when did we do that last year, Lori? Um, I think it ended up being in, in like, it got pushed back. So I think it ended up being in the fall or maybe even a yeah. July meeting. Normally we try to do it at a May meeting, um, but it does move around a bit. Um, yeah. Actually, let me just take a look. When is it scheduled right on our multi-year um, agenda and annual multi-year agenda right now? It's scheduled for May. All of our policy. Okay. Um, and is this our work or is that this is the board policy piece? Uh, it is, but usually what happens is the uh, CEO reviews them all and recommends, you know, does track changes to to uh, edit what she thinks needs to be adjusted. And then okay. we receive that, that uh, document or documents and we read it ourselves and decide, you know, ourselves what we think need to be adjusted. And then as a group, we discuss it. Okay. So and we have a, um, yeah. Okay. So um, there shouldn't be any problem with achieving that. And this, this is something we do on a yearly basis. So that should be okay. Um, key metrics. Um, we've been talking about that for a while. Um, we did develop what we think are some for our presentation to council, um, but we don't currently um, track them on a regular basis. So I think that comes out of once this is finalized, we can take a look at the data elements we have and how um, and what we suggested for council. Does that make sense, Joanne? Because you and I worked on those metrics. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I think that's part of, um, I'm just thinking back as the board actions. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we have, we have that. I think the, the action, um, yeah, the actions you've got here make sense. Um, it might just be a, um, we just determine how often we're going to report them. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Annually, et cetera. Um, the vault, we have an agenda item for that. So I think I suggest we uh, uh, defer that. Um, the framework for um, once we get our charitable status. Have we had any progress recently, Jen? On I haven't heard anything. Okay. Okay. Um, Before Sabrina left her and I did talk about it and she didn't think that we would have an answer until probably around summertime. Okay. Or an update at least, but they have everything. It's We're just waiting. And I haven't been asked for any other supporting documentation, anything like that. I just have a history of everything that has been sent. Okay. 
All right. But I think that should stay on our um, board action plan. Yeah, um, I am. Um, I just, I, oh, wording is going to come later. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm looking at OE4. Just conscious. Oh, we still have an hour and a bit, but I'm just conscious of time. Um, so OE4 being a key partner with the municipality. Um, and uh, we have we have reviewed the budget. Um, have we demonstrated? Do we need to is this would this be something we would do when we go back with the results of our of vault? Um, is to show I mean I think we want to continually reinforce with the town where we feel we're supporting uh, their priorities mm. is this I'm just wondering if this is a duplicate with anything else if this ladder's up to anything else no is fine okay um council and board members meet semi-annually on a one-to-one -one basis i'm very happy to report i did meet with june uh we had a lovely meeting a lovely coffee and uh um so i think carol just fyi we we have identified that this is an important opportunity to develop relationships and um, better understand uh, questions. You know, I, one of the things I said to June, because she asked me about the electrical, that same issue that I seem to have got pulled out of the some meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I anyway, I um, I know Sean, you had sort of redirected them, but I, I said to June, you know, if you ever have any other questions, just feel free to reach out and send me a text or something if there's something you're, you know, confused about. So I think that is important. I don't know who are we going to um, give to Carol. <laughs> <laughs> well, who did? Um... <laughs> who was the gap in the council well i don't know maybe maybe we, I mean, I we, think we have to go back yeah i think we have to go back to the list, list. Yeah. yeah okay yeah um, that is an action step of confirming okay. who the council on yeah um maintain I was going Pardon? to say, is it even the deputy mayor? I think it might be the deputy mayor, but I was just losing my suit. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the gap. Oh, nobody has the deputy mayor? I don't believe so. I'll take the deputy mayor. Give <laughs> <laughs> these answers for yes. <laughs> Julie, um, can I ask where you had coffee, where you met in June? Um, at the Thornbury Bakery. Okay, that's where I met Gail. Yeah. Yeah, because it's noisy, so you don't really have to worry about. I think you were the one that said that, Sean. Right? It was a good place. Did yeah. you tell me a good place to meet? It's my spot for sure. <laughs> Should I yeah. have to take an exit stage left? It's a good public place to. Uh... So, did you pay for the coffee? No, we paid for our own. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just questioning. That's a good question, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'd go out to coffee with, uh, you know, it was like networking, right? Sure. That could be expensed to the library. Well, it also could be considered lobbying, too. Yeah, I was going to say, depending on who wants something out of the meeting, if you have a copy and pay for everything. Yeah, that, I, I did have a question because now there's a new lobby registry. I don't. It's just. This is. And like it's being a lobby. Yeah. It's got to be. These are, you know, I, I think that. Clearly, if these are public, you know, this meeting is recorded when we talk about who we met with or are going to meet with. It's not, I don't think we're... The way I explained it, sorry, if I could, yeah, the yeah. way I explained it, because yeah. June, June did ask me, she said, I've been contacted, what's this about? I said, it's really so you have someone, not me, that's a point of contact on the library board if you have questions. 
your concerns. You've read something before. Do you want to ask a question? It's a much easier process to call up your contact yeah. and ask them what this is about. And then that made a lot more sense. And plus, Julia and June were like a good fit anyways, both being nurses, seemed like an appropriate match. So, and she said that she thoroughly enjoyed meeting you and discussing things with you. So, yeah, I say, yeah, so anyway, it was a good, yeah, it was good. So, yeah, I, don't, I didn't mind buying my own coffee. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're well, talking a little yeah, bit of money, uh, but it's the perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, like I think I treated yeah. Gail, but it wasn't like I was buying our steak dinner and a new car. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 Plus, so we came in at problems. different times, so it would have been weird. I mean, um, because I was there, but just before her, so you're not gonna. Yeah, it just worked out anyway. Um. Yeah, and then the last one there, this one we sort of struggled with last year too, um, whether what was our responsibility. Like we started to talk about key stakeholders and influencers, and I'm not sure we ever really landed on that and how we would go about that. Or We had done quite a bit as a previous board on um, uh, who we were already, there's actually a good document on who the library has already partnered with at the staff level. And then we started talking about who were the influencers in in town and then what's our connection to them. So uh, we didn't get very far. Uh, it was probably the last year of that board term. Um, but, you know, it was things like um, the um, oh, the Craig Leith Working Group, if it you know, reemerges, uh, that's going to be an influencing group in this area. So, you know, how do we connect with them? You know, um, the Ratepayers Association. So there's, there's different groups that we may want to identify. So it's not something this board has really tackled yet at all. Okay. So maybe we could... Uh... Uh, try to refine the first everything else first, and then we could maybe look look at how we could approach this. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I think it is important, Julia, because they could be allies to us when it comes to looking at expansion yeah. of space. Yeah. Um, and so, if, if there's people off the board that are influencers in the community that support us that might be a good voice to be at the council meetings when these issues are raised. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. do we approach them then if we don't really have anything to say yet? Yeah. yeah. To say, well, we have to have our case connect. clear with our options and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so I think there's two two aspects to this. One is it's purpose driven. So we, you know, we have a major action like expansion. And so then we have to say, well, who is it who might help or who might have some concerns or who might need more information? And so how do we approach that? And then the other is just as a library is, you know, a, a central, <laughs> central to any community, how do we make sure that like, are there stakeholders or different groups that are emerging? And sometimes it's new, like a frankly, you know, as we're expanding and we've got a section of our community that has an area of concern, how do we just make sure that we are aware and that if there's a role the library can play with them, that we figure that out? That's well, kind of that's more broad stroke, sort of the library making sure that as a board we're we're well, it was even when we looked at the naming of our frankly station. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if we'd had some more influencers there at the meeting, it would have made a difference. Right. Because you hear the outliers, you don't hear all the people that agree. Yeah. Yeah. And so they 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 seem to be reacting to those voices at the table coming in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I think that's a strategy we have to have, keep in mind yeah. for something that's important to us. And to be mm -hmm. proactive, I suppose, to make the connections before there's a crisis yeah. to develop the trust. I agree. Before we really, we, yeah. okay, hello. You don't know me, but I want you to do now, something. Know, but, yeah. so, well, actually, what struck me about that process is the public process that we followed, we actually had a lot of support for the station, but it was the private phone calls to the councillors. And that was an interesting piece of news yeah. to me, is they had a process and they had a secondary process. Yeah. And the secondary seemed to be more influent because it was obviously personal contacts, personal phone calls. But okay, so there's a lesson to us that the letters to council are important, 
but you need to make sure that it's backed up with um, actual individual contacts. Which yeah, so yeah. it goes back to our, our sort of one-on-ones, right? Like, But not just with counsel, but also with other people that can verbalize what we're saying. Yeah, yeah us, us to counsel, us to others, and then others to counsel. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit yeah. like politics in general. It's very iterative. You know, no uh, no political party gets out of, out ahead of the the, uh, the population too far, right? Because they know they're not going to get elected the next time. So it's uh, they, they do baby steps and making sure they've got support each step of the way. So yeah, He's back so and forth. So naive. Yeah. So so as an action, I think this is important to have it here. And the action is that we you know we do this. Maybe it is once a year just to kind of go through saying, you know. Are there different groups? Are there, you know, how are we connected? You know, are there people who are now raising concerns or people who seem to have questions? Um, I do think it's an important board activity. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I think it's written makes sense based on this conversation. <laughs> like to create a list and then name one of the board members to reach out to them, like how specific. Depend, I guess it depends on what Depend. comes out of that conversation. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it might be, you know, okay, so here's, these are specific groups. And so far, as far as we know, there's, they don't have questions about it, or it could be, yeah, we each just reach out and say, hey, if you have any questions about the library, let us know. Well, you or know, there's I mean, stuff out there too. So, yeah. I was say, so we yeah. would call this a stakeholder analysis. Okay. Yes. Yes. And then yeah. you do a stakeholder analysis and say, here are the people that are supporting, here's how we'll treat you. Here's the ones that are neutral, mm -hmm. which means they can go either way. And then here's the ones that are totally against it. And what's our plan on trying to get them either into neutral or into support? So, yeah. That's that exactly the, that's that's exactly the, the process. Purpose purpose, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I remember, Laura, you said there were different colors, I think. Yeah, we did sort of red, yellow, and green. So the greens uh -huh. were people that were supportive and just needed information, you know, on if we wanted to get them to support something, you know, make sure they had the right information. There were the yellows, which were neutral. And so what, you know, what would they need and often purpose, uh, um, topic-based. And then there was the, the negative. So how do we address their, um, neutralize their negative or respond to their concerns specifically, and then try to move them to yellow. So you're trying to move the reds to the yellow, the yellow to the green. I, I just FYI, I learned uh, yesterday that the word stakeholder is no longer uh, considered uh, appropriate from a um, DEI perspective because the stakeholder is somebody who takes a stake and plants it into land and says, this is mine. Oh, yeah. So what's the new term? I don't know. I can't, I didn't get that. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. That's, uh, yeah. that's well, you definitely could say person of interest. That wouldn't work either. <laughs> you know, it's like, we don't say master be bedroom anymore. We say right. primary yes. bedroom. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. another colonial so uh, colonizer it's term. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but I don't know what we what we <laughs> we have to find a more politically correct word. Community um, leaders. Yeah. Like yeah. That. yeah. Or influencers, community influencers. Everything is influencers now. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Do some background work. Yeah. yeah. Community yeah. groups. Community there you go. Give it to The kids method. Community groups. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so there's some good feedback. I will do a little bit of work and then maybe when we finish our meeting, we can look at a time for those that wanna be involved in the next step or we do a committee of the whole. Um, if everybody wants to be involved uh, in the next step of the board action plan, does that work? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Um, so do we wanna review the CEO action plan? And there's two versions of it in that you've got the track yeah, changes I version. Little... I know. Was... I, I included the track changes just to be fully transparent. Um, you changed if you everything. Wanted to go back to it, but it probably makes when I posted the public package, I posted the clean version. Yeah. So oh, good. Um, that's what's on the screen right now. So the it, the look of it looks very similar to. Uh, the previous template, but I just updated the 
terminology to match the proposed new format for the board's plan. Jen, could you clarify for me what IDEA, the acronym IDEA stands for? Yes, so it's a new acronym for EDI. It just includes accessibility. So oh. it's in inclusivity, diversity, equity, and accessibility. Very awesome. Um, and that is what the new name is of the town's committee. Um, so that's what that is. Does the addition of the A get into the AODA type of accessibility? Yes. Okay. That's a good thing you're on that committee because we have some of those AODA issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the so, committee I did not change the same level of the town hall. Did, well, this, this committee I think was started and then paused and then now they're trying to bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah. yeah. And it was a topic at the last SAM meeting, and I can't remember. I think it means service area managers. Yeah, maybe we should spell those out for those. Okay. Yeah. When I did put this together, and I obviously consulted with certain staff, um, it's very CEO oriented. I didn't have a problem with that from my perspective. And I did try to look at if there were overlap and how I could incorporate it into my plan. So it's maybe we're achieving the same goal, but we're doing different actions to get there. Yeah, which makes sense. Um, and I think it really supports um, us as we sort of refine ours. You know, we can see, well, oh, what, what, it, what are you doing in this area and how does it, um align so was there anything you wanted to that you questioned or you wanted specific approval on i don't think we should approve it today uh given that we haven't approved ours um the only thing well there was the campus of care uh which sean did address earlier in the meeting and so that came and this was pulling from last year's and making sure because it wasn't complete. So I don't know whether or not that really needs to be included. Um, the only other thing too is because it is the end of March, there are certain goals that I have included in this plan um, that are already in progress or already yeah. complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. yep. fair. So I just wanted to demonstrate I am doing things. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. We don't really do it all. No, we don't. We're not just writing about them. <laughs> I mean, Lori, do, I mean, maybe I spoke too soon. Do you, do you think we are in a position to approve this? Um, I think it'd be good to look at it again in April uh, or whenever we're going to do a committee meeting. Um, yeah. At, you know, and, and whether we put them together or how, how we manage that and make sure we've got everything covered. Pick up one of the things that, yeah, because there's probably a few things that came up recently that, I, for example, um, I think you picked them up, Jen, but I can't remember now. And be, and the truth be told, I read this yesterday and not all of it stuck. <laughs> not having the easiest couple of weeks here. Um, but, you know, did we, you know, we want to talk about the 21st century library and doing uh, more blog entries. And I think that ended up in this, but I'm not sure. So I think it's probably good to have a chance to look at it again um, in connection with the, the the board one. I mean, we know you're working on it. Jen, we know you're working on stuff anyway. Yeah. 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 yeah you're not waiting for us to, uh, yeah. There's nothing in here that, Mm -hmm. uh, at least from my perspective, that I thought, oh, no, she just shouldn't be doing this. So I agree. <laughs> there is um, mention of the outreach strategy and our manager, just as an FYI of community engagement, her goal is to come to our April meeting with a high level outreach strategy for this year. OK, great. Okay. Um, Jen, just on that page, so um, under 21st century literacy, it says ensure staff representation in provincial discussions 
Um, is that a separate group, the Ontario Library and Information Technology Association? Is that part yes, of the well, it falls under the scope of the Ontario Library Association, and we do. So this particular goal is we do have a staff member who is representing our organization um, on a provincial level. And this is just making sure that we continue, like committing to continuing to have that provincial presence. Okay. So would a board member be needed for that as well, or that's just strictly staff, CEO? Yeah, no board. It's not a board um, committee. And this actually the staff member that does sit on that committee, um, Ashley Prince, she will be the vice president of, oh, cool. of this association. Which is, is that the one that came in to help you with the yes, yeah, she does the yeah. Cool. yes. Okay, all right, so we'll move on to um, the joint use recreation feasibility study. Um, so this uh, uh, is a good summary of um, what we have gone through in order to ultimately um, be successful. Um, I don't know if, Jen, you have anything you wanted to highlight here. Have you had, you've had your first, have you had your first meeting? Yes, I had, the first meeting I had was actually before I was officially appointed to the committee. Yeah. Um, and so I did participate in another meeting this week where as a group, we were evaluating um, the RFP or sorry, one of the proposals that, um, came back so that was a really collaborative um exercise and that was actually the first time i've had to do that so um it was good this specific report though um i think would be really beneficial for carol too because i made sure that i included the history of when this conversation started um and where we are now and there is a small section on next steps, um, but a contract has not been awarded yet. We were just in the evaluation process. So once there is a contract awarded, then public consultation is built into um, that study. And that was a very, uh, we had a lot of conversation when we were evaluating the proposal that we received about how, why consultation is a very important piece of this project, um, why the library should have a very, from both Collingwood and Blue Mountain's perspective, but almost a lead role in evaluating that particular section. Um, so that's sort of what happened at our meeting this week, but no decisions have been made, nothing's finalized, um, but I did attend and it's a it's a really great group of people. That's good. What is the, um, and this goes, so the first stage of the RFP is you put requirements for the capability of who you're looking for. And yes. Here's here's the the end result we're looking for is this feasibility study. Um, I'm assuming that there is a stage which is here are the areas. So as we were talking earlier, so we know that there are many gaps currently to library service delivery. Mm -hmm. So is there a deadline or a timeline for when library input or any other state stakeholder in this process like? facilities or, you know, says, okay, like Ryan for programming, right? You know, is there a stage or a timeline of delivery for here's, here's what we would put in as our, you know, sort of even high level considerations for them? Because there would be, a, I think, probably a more, probably like a brief or more formalized next step. There was a timeline. All The proposal has a timeline yeah. for, um, consultation and then the word stakeholder was used a lot but it's identifying those key stakeholders there's nothing set in stone but once we have like the library board will be consulted the library has 
now equal representation on the committee. So the only timeline I really have is um, what we included in what we were asking for, and it was to have the study complete by the fall of this year. So I don't know for sure when. So to me, that says that we should get our high level priorities identified. So mm -hmm. I go through the gap, go through the high level priorities and have them identified before the summer. Because at some point, you know, I'm just thinking when you'd have to give the consultants that information, because there's a lot of information you'd have to go They through. have, um, or they will have, and it's, it's part of a project webpage that hasn't been launched yet. There's been a bit of a delay, but they will have all of the studies that we've already completed as part of the kind of- Yeah, so that actually worries me because here's all the studies, but as our current so board, we, we haven't said, these are today's priorities because the study that was done in 2018 might have some things that we are saying are, you know, that's not a priority. It's a nice, but it's not a mandate. But right now, stay to the building. There's some mandates. There's, I'm just, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So there'll be so, opportunity. Like we, we I, could I have something important. formal together, but there will be um, like interviews surveys but again all we need to be ways. prepared then too so yes. we have yeah, all our ducks in a row to yeah. say yeah you know our voices are uniform instead yeah. of you know somebody says we need a new washroom and then somebody says we need a team space right um yeah so that the messaging <laughs> is all over the place which then they'll yeah. cherry pick what they want from it yeah so i i think we need a consistent story which is based on our utilization oh. assessment and and yeah. from that drives where, where we want to drive things. I think yeah. we have, aren't ready for that. Which is yeah. why it's a great, like if you feel good about it, that's very reassuring to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm going to point. But if you feel good about it, that's really reassuring because, you know, uh, and I'll be quick too, I know we have things to do, but um, like take your point exactly, Joanne, is that the natural heritage study, it sounds great. It's been done three times before. And do you know what they study? Flora and fauna. Nothing about the indigenous areas. Nothing about the fossils in this area. Nothing about anything that's actually the about water, heritage. There's no like there's nothing. It's just, and it all comes to the same conclusion over and over again. For that reason, they're provided with the first three studies. Yeah. And they'll probably come to the same conclusion. Yeah. It's yeah. really, and a price tag of three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I just we've already agreed we need to get the committee going and we need to do it. I'm just, this just yeah. helps to know that, yeah. okay, so this- What's the time pressure? The time pressure so I'm thinking in terms of time so they yeah. haven't sent the RFP out yet. It's not, it's a different process. It's a GPO purchasing process. So a consulting firm sends out the, the RFP. Oh, okay. Um, so we only had one submission that we evaluated. For the consulting firm. Yeah. Okay. The consulting firm uses a consulting firm reaches out to get another consulting firm. Yeah. So the yeah. consulting firm is doing the administrative part of the RFP. Yes. Basically. And then who's approving the RFPs? Like the responses to your fee is that the it would be, committee? Um. Yes. Well, it would be a matter of. Yeah. Well, yes. And that's what we were evaluating at our last meeting. I don't know what the next steps are just yet. I'm just thinking okay. in terms of timeline, right? Because if they haven't sent the RFP out yet, but their deadline is, well, fall officially ends when winter starts, right? So you're back in <laughs> December. I know this because that's what we used to always say. You'd have things done by <laughs> fall. I'm confused. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> the contract hasn't been awarded yet, but we've received proposals. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that part's been done. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes. okay. Yes. Oh, so that timeline seems feasible. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. then in and terms of the saying, library yeah. board being yeah. in a good position to put forward what you see, this was part yeah. of the last year, uh, the last year's budget item. This is how long it's taken. Yeah. yeah. So it is behind. Not yeah. really, not by your yeah. It is behind. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, ultimately we'll we'll pull it together and it will help everybody because it yeah. will help reduce, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, you don't need to read the 2012 study. You <laughs> You can just yeah, so we need 18 or, 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 or even the, or, yeah, or the 2024 but, part, so. Yeah, I think. And yeah, anyway, yeah. Anyway, okay. Yeah, because yeah, there's a danger of looking at previous studies because you're getting those biases built in. Right. And so I, I think it's just, yeah. 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 So this is another work group or committee, the whole meeting. This is the one I was talking yeah. about. We, we should have yeah. to for those priorities. 
and now it needs to oh, happen. Yeah. So I would think the timeline why we would need to be like early summer in a good position to yeah, agree. Yeah. And you've got vacation and travel yeah. and people meeting. Yeah. But yeah. Chris is right. If we have a solid front from the board and the staff and the CEO, then it's a solid yeah. large group that Okay. Okay. I just want to keep us moving. So okay. um so thank you, uh, everybody. Um I did want to read out, um, you suggested Jen, that I read out the community members' email um, who thanked oh. Lori for... So we did... I remember I mentioned that there was four pieces of information that we received, but that the people live streaming will not have received because it's got identifiable information. So there was the four letters. There was the, um, the original note from council saying our motion to have the CEO um, on was denied. Then there was Lori's letter and that, that those both were concluded that um, as was the uh, approval when they, when they responded February 20th and said, okay, yes, CEO is involved. And then we received um, um, an uh, email of thanks from uh, a community member um, who um, thank Lori for addressing the appalling situation that would have kept our library CEO from being part of the committee to explore future considerations for our library. Your impassioned and factual plea kept the um, council from, uh, ensured the council um, uh, addressed the needs of our library. So um, just wanted to put that on the record for those who are listening versus seeing the package. Okay, um, so we'll move on then. Oh, we need a motion um, for to uh, receive the report um, on the joint multi-use recreation facility study. So can I have a, a mover? Please. Joanne, a seconder? I can't Sorry. see any. And was that not involved in all the receiving motions? Yeah, that would have been at the beginning. Right. Can I include that on the agenda? I may have you. Sorry. Well, we received the correspondence. We didn't receive this report. It was um, received as information through the consent agenda at the, the very beginning of the meeting. Oh, okay. All, right. Yeah. So we don't need to do that then. Okay. Okay. Apologies for that. Um, Moving on then to F3, the uh, organizational excellence. Um, this is with respect to our continuous improvement report. So if you recall at our previous meeting um, or a previous meeting, we asked uh, Jen to take back the um, report um, to the Occupational Health and Safety Committee. Remember, uh, uh, Chris, you had... Really yeah, sound. I guess I'm still struggling with that because all the action plans I see there as being just part of their job, not goals for. There is a section for goals. Which ones? Are you? Yeah, see, to me, those are all functions of that committee, not goals. But again, it might be how you're defining goals. I don't have any problem with this report. I'm I, but I kind of agree. It's you'd expect the uh, Joint Health and Safety Committee to do these things. I'm just not sure why the board needs to see it or endorse it. I mean, they they're they're good. They're fine. Um, part of what we would expect them to do. I think this is included in the multi-year agenda. Uh, yes, it is included in the multi-year agenda. Again, I'm not sure why we've we've done that in the past. And maybe there's a policy that says that we will the board will that they'll report to the board and the board will approve. I don't. This is health and safety, so the health and safety often gets you the board involved at um, a lower level than than governance. <laughs> Um, well, to be a health and safety report coming to us should alert us to safety needs or incidents. 
And, and if there's anything that we need to be aware and, and action item from that, in terms of just seeing what their job description is, which is what I view this as, um, I agree with it all. It, it, it speaks to the functions of that particular committee. Maybe this is something that uh, when we look at the health and safety policies at our, at our policy meeting, that we say, okay, now why are we getting this report and is it necessary for us to be seeing it? Uh, there is also a report called the risk assessment that we got last meeting, and that's the report that I'd asked um, the CEO to do a couple of years ago on an annual basis to alert us as a board to where our points of risk are and what are the, what mitigation yeah. um, we get. So I, so I think the risk side of it is covered in that report. And I agree, I'm just not quite sure why this report is something that needs to come to the board. No, no criticism, Jen, it is on the- Yeah, um, no, I realize you know, that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if I think back to the original motion, which I did include part of it in here because there may be something I'm missing, but the key piece I think was that the board were to endorse the goals, but do we need to do that? I guess the discussion is how are you defining a goal versus an action? And your first where you say, you know, lost time injuries are zero, I would see those as goals, but having, um, so training, is that a goal or is that an action? So maybe that's where there's confusion in this versus so definition of goal versus action and how low down do you need to delineate into the action? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would think that our policy should state what kind of report we want. And I don't know what it does say, though I think this is in response to our policy. So okay, so we should... Bring this back when remember this conversation when we look at our policies. Um, yes, in the meantime, you know, they're asking us to endorse it. I don't see there's anything that we cannot endorse in this, so I don't have any trouble doing that motion. Um, but the question is maybe for next year, do we need this need this at this level? And that's a discussion I mean, we can have in the policy discussion. Right. But I think we need some assurance that the organization is functioning. Um, according to, you know, ensuring health and safety. Yeah, yeah, there is an oversight responsibility. I agree with you. I mean, one of the things, I mean, this isn't really talking about the policy, but you could say have met the requirements of the Occupational Health and Safety Act, period. So you've done your review of the policies, you met yeah. all this. I don't need to get into it. Then have exceeded it through this or, you know, had five falls and here's what we've done against falls. So that sort of higher level of discussion. And where does first aid fit into this? Like they're saying 50% uh, um, certified in joint health and safety training certification. What about first aid certification? Does it fit with this or is that a whole separate area with staff? All of our staff for the most part are first aid certified. So that would be in there. It would be in their job requirements, but it would be. It's likely in a health and safety policy too. Yeah. Because I know you have like Mikey at the doorway there. Does everybody know how to use that? Uh, or will there always be somebody on site that knows how to use yeah. that, for example? Yes. Well, yes. We always have at least one staff member on site that is first aid certified. Yeah. I think, so, I Lori, think some yeah. of the important questions that these are being asked now are probably they don't they aren't obvious in the report, and we're getting a bit inundated with a lot of detail that aren't helping us address what we think are the key issues. And so this I think this report needs work for next year, and our approach to that is uh, is our policy discussion. Okay, I think I don't just yeah. this is goals, but anyways. So I think that's what, so for that 2024 report, we'll yeah, talk about whether these are, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. I almost want to go back and watch the recording from last year when this report came to the board, because Sabrina may have been able to articulate it better than I can. For the most part, I didn't write this. I just updated uh, what was asked from the January meeting. 
but that's all. And to be honest, I can't remember it either. Okay. But I know I probably would have looked at it with the same lens from my perspective, because I have a lot of help that's in the background too. Right. Mm -hmm. The okay, so safety committee did look at it before it came back. <laughs> yeah, well, well that's I, I fine. what they're doing is saying these are all the things we have to do this year, which is really functions of that role. I think I'd rather know what what were the last time injuries and what was done to prevent it from happening again. Yeah, so yeah. Saying. And if there hasn't been any, then that's and there is a separate report. report that does. Yeah, so maybe it's just yeah. it's the difference between that your, need to... between the plan and the report. Right, this feels like a plan. And yes, it does good more. And, well, and also, like we said, the incident report at was at our last meeting. So is okay. that all resolved now? Yeah. yeah. But in the meantime, um, are we going to uh, accept to this? Endorse this? Endorse this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll use this. Can I have a mover, please? Chris? Seconder? <laughs> I've lost everybody because I'm flipping back and the, yeah, Lori seconded. Okay, who seconded it? Lori. Lori. Okay. Oh, Lori. Chris and Lori. Okay. All in favor? All hands are up. All hands, up. All hands are up. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Jen. Um, yeah. Verbal report now on the Valuing Ontario Libraries Toolkit. Um, the only update I have is I had forwarded, this may have been before your appointment, Carol, um, an update from the Ontario Library Service, I believe it was in February, um, where they did identify that some of the formulas were wrong. Um, so I have to go back in, download a new template, plug all of the data back in. And the reason I didn't do that too quickly is because I'm just sort of waiting. What if there's another error? Yeah. Not that I don't trust the tool. Um, I think that there are a lot of people that are way more qualified than I'm developing it. Um, but it is a new tool. And uh, that's just where we're at with it right now. We have all of the stats to plug back into the template. Um, we just haven't done that yet. You're right. I'd want to have it debugged. <laughs> yeah, like someone has to get the gun. Yeah. Okay. But at what point do you fully trust it, or we fully trust it? <laughs> so, you know, I, I mean, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But I mean, because some of those, the things that we caught were right. kind of obvious. Were blatant, yeah. So there may be more subtle ones. But I don't. I don't. I, I'm. I don't know where I'm going with this question, but I'm not sure how we decide. So, okay. okay. All right. It's worth your time now. Right. And that, you know, this was driven by a desire to get back to council and our desire to get back to council with here's everything the library does and here's the value. Um, so I don't know if it's a, are there, you know, two or three of the criteria instead of waiting for the whole thing? Um, are there two or three that yes. we're really comfortable with? And we say, okay, for sure, all the numbers in here we're really comfortable with, they're valid, and we can present those. Or I don't know. Well, I would say that, you know, just wait a little bit longer because as soon as we saw it, we were obviously one of the only ones in Ontario mm -hmm. that was something wrong with this with this template. Yeah. So they probably got a lot of feedback really quickly. Oops. Yes. Right. And before that notice came out, I did, um, at the January meeting, I committed to reaching out to Ontario Library Service for a one-on-one -on -one support to go through our document. Mm -hmm. I did do that, and I did identify some of the funky numbers that we saw, um, but I haven't then reached back out. Um, and I think that is an important step to go over it with them, but there are certain like basic numbers we could pull and include um, in the 2023 annual report, which I've started to work on something and see where, you know, maybe it's just a matter of including in that specific report, you know, how much money per household did the library sort of yeah. those sort of stats we could pull from the toolkit for that specific report. When is that report due? For the next meeting. Okay. 
So yeah, I mean, I think we don't want to wait until summer to be, or, you know, right. inter I, I don't want to hold up the annual report. Yeah. So maybe that is the better way in. And then we can just speak to the other criteria still in development with the OLS. After this about, meeting, yeah. either in the minutes, can you flag or put a box on the bottom to say, these are all the task force or work groups or tasks that we need to have done this year. So we've already talked about three or four things this meeting. I'm just worried it's gonna get buried in minutes and I will not pay attention to it. Um, and immediate so, actions. Flex, cause, so cause yeah, I keep yeah. hearing, we need to have this done by June. We need to have this done by June. It's time. okay, it's okay. Cause Jen's taking minutes and I yeah. will go over them with her and we will pull those things out. Don't panic. And yeah, fill in the things the board, maybe then we identify what are the priority ones. Yeah. Because if we're yeah. talking about having influence in that multi-use study, I would think that would be our priority and that would be a lot of work to get to that point of being very polished. Yeah. 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 And that's the point of the the action plan is that the things that we're doing end up pull into that document that we can monitor it as sure, it we're, yeah. Along. Yeah. yeah, the support for why we need more speed because our workload says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, that's just a verbal update. Thank you, Jen. And then um, we have a new policy, respectful public interactions. Um, and uh, there are a couple more new policies coming, but this was something that we had identified. We had a gap in and um, from what I um, understand it aligns with the uh, town uh, policy so Jen do you want to speak to this and yeah. then the highlights everything you said was a really good introduction to the policy the only thing I would add is just um, we don't have a policy that already exists that really outlines um a guideline of expectations for all public interactions, whether it's social media, um, those sorts of things. So this policy is very much based off the, the town of the Blue Mountains policy. Um, the only thing that would be different is the uh, appeal process. So um, because we're governed by the Public Libraries Act, you don't appeal a decision to uh, is it the integrity commissioner? Like that's not the, the process. So um, I believe what's outlined in this policy is because this is interactions between the public and staff, uh, the CEO would, would be the person to handle the behavior, but should there be a decision made and somebody wants to appeal it, it would go, the final level of appeal process would be the board. You don't go to an integrity commissioner because that doesn't apply to us. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And so could you just go where to the part of the document that says it gets to appeal to the board? At the very bottom. I think so, yes. Not be, in the event that complaints cannot be resolved under this part, but they may be submitted to the library board. Dot, okay. dot, dot. What, and then what do we do? We... Uh, and then it's the library board's decision. It can't be appealed yeah. by to anything because so maybe okay. that needs to be stated is who yeah, have to find we had it who yeah then more detail to number three. The yeah, and say and how they would have written into the library board like is that via the CEO or like how would they get to the library board? Yeah, I would imagine it would be. I'm. I don't like this decision for whatever reason. I want to appeal the decision, and then my response would be. I will forward your appeal to the library board. Yeah. And and what um, I would like, and what yeah. I would like to see then is a section that says the library board will. <laughs> yeah, what do we do? That's what I wonder, Lauren. That's okay, exactly do do? yeah. And that was the that's yeah. one of the reasons we wanted this um this policy. And I know the town didn't really go past the point you've already done, Jen, but when I worked with the workplace harassment and the workplace violence policy. They each gave slightly different direction. They didn't conflict, <laughs> but I had to read two different policies to try to figure out where to go next. And so that's what I'd like to see is to have the next step is the library board will will complete an investigation. Um, you know, the, the time frame should be within 30 days or it should be the process is blah, blah. 
um, who should be involved, you know, the chair is responsible or a committee is responsible, you know, whatever, some of that. Some should of there be a, uh, it may not be in here, but should there be a framework of how the library board would handle anything that comes at them? I think from transparency perspective, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it needs more detail. And, yeah. and also so there there's actually a library is, board getting the authority yeah, to do this. There's actually quite a bit in both the workplace harassment and the workplace violence policies that we already have that address this. I think you just need to be able to pull it out and yeah, come up with Appreciate a process it. here. Um, and then it may also involve going back and revising those other two policies. Cause I don't, I don't like to see same things repeated in different places <laughs> because then you're always, um, when you edit, you have to edit in different places. Uh, to keep them consistent. Anyway, so I think you need to add that section to this policy, and then we need to go back to the other two policies and and either take out or make a just simply make a reference to you know. And if this is appealed to the board, see the this other policy. Does that make sense, to you, Jen? Where is the board getting authority to do this? Is this through the Public Libraries Act? It's, it's or is this something other boards do? Or is this something this, that they're just coming to this board? Because well, I'm just thinking the last it, level of authority. Yeah, like if you've got someone who is totally upset with the decision and then the board agrees with the decision, and they're still totally upset, but they have nowhere else to go. Then they're going to start challenging the board. And why did the board make that decision? And, well, I mean, I don't think you hopefully would never get to that. But if you take yeah. the worst case scenario. Well, I think where I got lost in developing this too is <laughs> there's I'm in the process of developing a policy for frivolous, vexatious, and unreasonable complaints. Um, and there is a connection in a way, but it isn't the same. So I get lost in um, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. I almost need to look no, at it again. I know it's kind of like where does one thing start and the other thing? Yeah, exactly. And that's why you have to look at all the policies at the same time. And then the other policy too um, that I was reviewing, and maybe I'm getting a little too in the weeds, this might be something we can talk about at our policy meeting, but a lot of these policies are similar, but they're, they actually aren't the same. Like they're, I couldn't find a way to combine them into one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm yeah. hearing we need to review. Um, I think we thank Jen for this policy. We yeah. ask you to to maybe outline a few steps of the of for the board, but then we also review all related policies at one point in time when we are doing like do them all together rather than one the at a time. What I'll say is um like I absolutely can amend that and probably just mimic my process for addressing yeah. behavior. Um, but do we wait between now and then to at least have something in place to help our right. staff? Yeah, I, I agree with the whole thing. I thought it was excellent, except that the last step when it's my French <laughs> self on the line, yeah. I wonder, okay, exactly yeah. what? Is that right. our, so I think if we need to just tweak that number three mm -hmm. and, and add a little more detail. And I just, again, the authority, and, you don't yeah. want the board to be overstepping the authority right. they have in playing this role. Because to a certain extent, I'm familiar, like we could be a little biased. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I do. And I, I, I think that we can probably address that with a quick, I don't have the wording in front of me, but the... Uh, I believe it does fall under our governance to have a final say, but but what we can sorry we should just have a talk okay. check. And Lori's got more time on this library board than than me, of course. But um, what we would do at council is that we would just we would appoint an appeals committee, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So then it's then the board members because the original I'm just just a suggestion, yeah. right? Yeah. So the original complaint, so and so forth, right? And then this person or whomever wants to make an appeal, well then, you know, I think would be within the board's parameters or within the board's authority to appoint an appeals committee, which would be a committee of people comprised of not board members, 
it would then they're like a third party right. and then they would review they would review yeah. all the contents and all you know all they would review it and then they would submit their findings or their uh you know their recommendation back to the library board who could deliver this finding just a suggestion it's food for well, thought i i think I think we I think we do need to say what the library board will do and I within the library board and then maybe the next step if if it cannot be resolved um at that point who do we re, do we establish an, an appeals committee like you know if I think about um uh an example where the chair and the vice chair might get together to and speak to the complainant. Um, like, I think that's perfectly legit for, we, we do have that I think, responsibility to, to do something. I don't think it would need to be an, like go right to an appeals committee. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as it stands, it ends with the library board. And at this point we have two other policies that give direction on how the library board will handle it. Um, and that's what I think we need to do is you need to add to this new policy, um, a single <laughs> approach rather than having it spread between two other policies uh, on how we would proceed. And then if at some point, um, you know, there, we would add a final idea, which doesn't exist now in our policy for an appeal and then what yeah. do we do if there's an appeal to our decision? Yeah. But I don't, I think probably the, you know, I'm okay not approving this now, waiting for the um, the resolution of this between all the other policies. But I'm also okay approving what we have here as a starting point. If Jen feels it's important to have this in place sooner than, rather than later, we know at the very end of this, if it comes to us, they, people can submit it to us. And we have other policies right now that we've mm -hmm. recently used as yeah. direction on how to handle it. So you could say it's been approved pending more depth in number three. Exactly. Okay. Because yeah. the, we're, we're, for the staff members, yeah. the number three isn't really important to them. Oh, yes. To them, it's that the board's <laughs> taking it seriously. Right. There is something in place to help yeah. address it, right. but the board is reevaluating its role. I mean, you could yeah. do it. Yeah. Okay. So, so can we say that the, motion, the board approve? Yeah, that um, board approve this policy um, as circulated, pe um, pending future clarification of the board role. Or, and yeah, and direct the uh, CEO to harmonize this policy with on the board. Yeah, never mind. Whatever you said is fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was, Pending here, clarification of the board role. We'll leave it at that. Can I have a mover? Uh, hello, Ari is happy to move. Okay. And a seconder? Marie. Marie, and all in favor? everyone yeah, okay right. good all right um moving Thank on you. um we've only got t 10 minutes uh and uh um i'm wondering if there are i know we have um a move into uh, can we defer the ceo fact sheet and um i think we could just your report on the super conference um, I think we there was no motions there. We just uh, uh, thank you very much. Julia, can I just jump in? Um, yeah. The CEO fact sheet may be a bit time sensitive because it's necessary for the um, compensation review. And it's also pretty standard language meant to follow the type of wording that uh, the town uses. So, and, and I think there's suggestions for some very minor um, edits here. Okay. So unless someone has anything big, I think we can okay. probably get through this really fast. Okay. I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I may have missed it because I read this near the end. So two, and this might not be, they don't, they might not fall in this document, but it's around conflict of interest and termination. I don't know if they fall in this document or if there's another 
So what are, what are the um, requirements, management, in terms of conflict of interest and termination? Um, is that not a condition of hire? That that's why I'm wondering hire? if this might not be the right document. I'm just- Because usually you. in job description, unless it's something that you can get inflicted while you're in the job, when we looked I've at the, no, I haven't either, not in the job discussion. And termination is a policy, so that would be under our policy. Yeah, which is fair. That's what I was asking because I wasn't yeah. quite sure. This no, we 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 looked at that. Um, it wasn't the fact sheet. We looked at the role description and we found it very useful. Um, at one point, I did recently. There was a director position posted. And some of the very minor, like you are the head of your department. That's why where I got some of that language from. Um, if this isn't the place for it, that's completely fine in terms of. Yeah, uh, I don't think if, it's if, if it's a separate document. You know, under the terms of of hiring and and that that's completely that's fine. Our, our Those are just policies, there. Yeah. and I think we okay. should. Could yeah, remember so that, that, that look at that. policy. That's mm -hmm. fair. That's great. Yeah. Otherwise, I didn't have. I that was all I was. Okay. Can I have a mover then? Chris, seconder. Oh, okay. Jordan. Okay. Thank you. Um, are is are people uh able to stay? Uh oh, all in favor. <laughs> um, are people able to stay an extra fifteen minutes? Yes. I thought we were scheduled to five. Uh was it? No, I don't think so. Okay. Am I missing? Yeah. Um, I can only do one five. four. Yeah, we do. Um, sorry, I can't stay till five. I have a person. Well, you get through what we need. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. get through the rest and yeah. maybe we'll, we'll be done. <laughs> okay. Um or I hand it over to Lori. Um, okay, so where are we now? We are um, on the uh, report. So we're thanking you, Jen, for the reflections on the super conference. I found it very helpful. Um, we did want to have a discussion about um, the midterm uh, Carol's orientation. Oh, right, verbal. Um, and I don't know if we know enough right at this moment. I think we talked about there may be some presentations that are um, available that have been pre-taped by council. I do think there is on our website under board orientation, um, the whole process we've used and links to the documents, but I'm, I'd have to go back and double check that. And Jen, you may know that already. I did, I sent it out a little late and I apologize, but I did give it a pretty thorough review and it is up to date. Um, Can I write through all that stuff? Did, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I could tell it's you like, okay, when you did your interview. What did I get into? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> That's how we did, all like, felt too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my understanding was that board members received a tour of both facilities and, you know, mm -hmm. commentary on maybe some of the deficiencies and some of the other conversations. So I'm happy to, to lead that with um, Carol. And then if there are any other board members that want to participate or want a refresher, it would be a good time to do it. Maybe do that as part of the needs announce. Yeah, yeah, we could combine it. That's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So all the other stuff was there then, like the FIHIPA and the Ontario Library Act and all that? It was very well done. It was actually. Yeah. I will okay. not take credit for that. That was Sabrina. Um, but yeah, I was even impressed when I clicked on the link. Like, oh, why didn't I do that before? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Carol, so you're ready to go. You're you're yeah, 100 want, that up to speed. put something in the minutes that I feel like the, that has oriented me sufficiently to... Okay. To be well, a, we need to get you to. You need to get a town email. I it has been set up. Yeah. I have your password, and I actually have my laptop here, so that after this meeting, I can okay. get access to the SharePoint site and everything. Okay, and be up and running. Okay. Set a thought though, too. If you're going to run a a re a rerun of deficiencies and the uh the buildings and stuff like that, 
maybe that's an opportunity for three of you to invite your council designates mm -hmm. to attend so that you can literally pull them along through the building and say, we've said this over and over again. Right. Now you can see it, smell it, touch it, whatever. So this is what the state of this repair is. Just a thought. Is, yeah, and I, the reason like I say it. three is because any more than three is considered four. Right. So I would say you know the dynamics of council. So who, which three should that be? I would say. It might have to be the three who we can find are available at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but well, if you're sorry, June, yeah. Paula. Is it the people that are most influential yeah, in council right. that could sway the vote just by speaking to it? Well, I think you need, if you pick three, right? Yeah. And then you can have a fourth as a backup if one of the three can't yeah. make it for that time frame. Just to talk. Yeah, that's good. Because yeah, right. right. yeah. you can talk about it, that you can talk about the council, yeah. but it's washed over with all the information. Mm -hmm. But when you, you know, bring them along, feed them some lunch and some coffee and whatever, and then they... I'm not know. even see if Bill will come to who... And Bill is the fleet and facilities manager. He is... Definitely he would have even more technical mm -hmm. if you ask me technical questions i probably yeah. won't be able to answer them i can tell you what needs to be replaced and maybe the status on a few things um but yeah it'd probably be helpful to have phil i don't have any experience in facility management yeah, yeah. he can give you the more technical questions yeah. if you have it but yeah i would say that's where you have an opportunity to bring on Say counselor, um, counselor Porter, counselor Hope, counselor, uh, uh Ardell, maybe. I'd be comfortable um, asking just that's the first three to start with, and then you know, and it, it needs to be worked around the first. I was sitting in because I already know. I think he was some, just a thought. That's a good one. Good one. Can I just say, um, some of the discussions today, Just I, I'm on the board orientation page, and I'm looking at the legacy documents for review. And I uh, notice here we've got, besides the memorandum of understanding, the funding agreement, we also have the building conditions report, and we have the updated gap analysis feasibility study. And those are two of the things that came up on our discussion today about you know, what are the gaps we're facing now for basics? And then what are the enhancements? And those two documents exist and they're only written about a year ago. You know, and on our website. So yeah. I think it's probably good for all of us to take a look at them again because you forget. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, Thank you for that. All right, um, let's move to empowering services, the CEO service update. So um, I alluded to the fact that uh, at least from Joanne's and I's perspective, we did not find these usage statistics very helpful and we had to do a lot of um, clarification and uh, calculations to attempt to turn it into some sort of a, how, you know, you know, what's, how well are we doing? How do we compare? Um, and uh, so we just literally have not gotten to, to this, but when I talked to you, Jen, you, you didn't think it would be difficult, like, because we got under the impression from Sabrina that these were standard requirements by the ministry that you had to upload, but you said, no, you, they could be changed. Yeah, I... the, the CEO report, can, it's not even mandatory from a PLA perspective. It's just a good way for the CEO to communicate information to the board that the board wants to see. So I've done CEO reports before that most of them do include statistics, um, just because some members are more stats heavy than others. Um, but some of them, like I've done board or CEO reports that are more impact story focused, you know, photos and where were we in the community this month and that sort of thing. But it, it really just depends on what you want to see. Um, from a reporting perspective, though, when the CEO goes to submit annual statistics for our provincial funding, there's 10 million different ways you can run the same report. And there have been times where I've actually, to triple check my work, gone through and added up 
all of the stats from the CEO report to see if it matched, but it's not, that's not the only way to find these numbers. Yeah, so I mean, I, I certainly think the rest of the report is quite useful. Um, the way it's set up, it's just some of the statistics like like active users. Is it good that they go up or 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 go down um, circulation? Like I think, you know, we we were able to Joanne and I really do a lot of thinking around well, what was a meaningful uh, indicator um, instead of just reporting numbers. But I think you still want these numbers. We will track them anyway. Uh, yeah, and maybe from a board perspective, we only need to see it once a year uh, in terms of the cumulus. Or if there's a red flag somewhere in there that you want to bring to our attention to say, guess what, something's happened here. And, uh, and some boards do do quarterly or it's just the annual. But then we get at more of the numbers we're using for council reporting, which is a whole different ballgame right now. Um, and so we make sure we've got stats to support that. Uh, from an activity perspective and that make our case. Just I for one don't I barely look at these statistics. Yeah. Okay. They're, just, uh, they're just I find them confusing and yeah. what what is what what's good, what's bad. You know, you right. can't yeah. Mm -hmm. And the extra, you know, previous month and comparable to last year and year to date, year to date makes no sense to me. How can our active users year to date be 9,424? I thought those were card holders. So basically, I don't find this helpful. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> and when we, we went to try to pull it, yeah. And when we went to try to pull it to add up like all the teen programs and the children's programs, so we could say, you know, it didn't, it didn't add like right like we were missing months and it was just crazy so um i think uh, there's an experiment with a different format um or just yeah i think i mean what i would what i'm wondering julia is there's the one chart that we put in that has the key metrics and it might just be i mean that would be something you're you're looking at quarterly yeah, but those are the essentially it is what you know what you want to have flags around is you know do we have a significant increase in new mem in new card holders or not do we have a significant increase or decrease in program in visitors to the library and it's really just versus we're all, it's always versus last year and you only yeah. do that on a quarterly basis um, yeah and um, and and programs so obviously you know. At the end of the year, knowing how and knowing how many of the different groups that we're serving, and we and who participated is really important. And but maybe it, it's more about you know, I think what you were saying is, you know, last month we had three team programs. It looks like they're really taking off. Like that's you know, or we offered them and nobody replied. So well, just the kind of else. are there things just operationally that you know okay these are goals because this is what we're supposed to be doing but nobody's nobody's interested so then as a board do we have ideas as to why or solutions so that's i think what would be numbers. good and, and i mentioned had this whole discussion when i had my interview is that these could be linked to the strategic plan yeah somehow. and to the both the work working sheets or action yeah. plans that yeah. we want to do this year so yeah. if one of the things is you want increased connection and we're saying, okay, increased connection. We're going to say if we have an increase in users, then we've had an increase in connection with the exactly. the yeah. our right. stakeholders. Yeah. I hate to use that word now because it's not a good word. But, <laughs> but like if you could if you could mesh the whole thing yeah. together, then these would have some meaning. And so, also, sorry, I was going to say, it's not just programs that we're interested in because your stats on circulation users, et cetera, are important because mm -hmm. remember the question that came out of council was, well, you know, are people still using books mm -hmm. um, yeah. or is everything ebooks now? Yeah. Um, so we so we need those stats to support our argument to say both are still yeah. in use. Um, so I wouldn't discount this, but I think li linking it to our other needs of reports to yeah. council or strategic goals would be very helpful. Yeah, and I think, and that was, that's what we pulled together, that that presentation to council, that was exactly why we pulled those things out, because yeah. they're, 
they're directly relating back to that story. So if you would, if you want, I'm happy to sit down and I'm happy to, to help. Well, that would be great. Picturing strategic goal. This is how we achieved it this month. And you can connect a program to the goal. You can connect a stat to the goal. You can connect a story to the goal. We would be like each okay. quarter, yeah. uh, like come to the board okay. each quarter with that. Yeah. Um, and know, then we know as a board at the end of the year, did we, did we know yeah. what we want to accomplish? Did we accomplish it? And did we have the performance measures to say we accomplished yeah. it? But we may, I'm thinking too, with this quarterly reporting, we might want to think of a different reporting for different strategic goals. Then we could really look at it more in depth and pay attention to it. So, yeah. you know, maybe the first, you know, community hub goals, we look at that Just for the first the January or February or yeah. March or whatever, and then look at another one for another month. Because when it comes to like all of them together, it's all math and you really don't pay as much attention. And you could do it alternatively because as a project management type approach, these are the ones that are red. These are the ones we're mm -hmm. gonna have trouble meeting. Green is beautiful. It's yeah, don't worry we about don't it. We need to talk about it. Yeah. Here's the ones that we think might go into the red zone and then have more from a project management perspective discussion rather than reviewing. That's true. Yeah. This so, report does, just to highlight, it does cite that's what these numbers are. It, it maybe could just be presented differently, but it does cite. I just want to give this a little bit of a, it, it has the, it does connect what we're reporting on back to the strat plan. It's just not very obvious. Like a member of the public wouldn't know what this means. Well, we didn't know what maybe it means. Some we probably that still would have to. Yeah. And then the yeah, other thing is there was really months good. missing because if we didn't have a board meeting, it wouldn't get included. So we went, anyway, it was, it was very <laughs> challenging. So Joanne, do I hear that you will sit down well, with? I'm, I'm, yeah. If you, if you want, I can. I think so. sit down and we can go through that and be right and I do like the yellow green whatever the, yeah. the red light red, green yeah, light yeah yellow. yeah red yellow green <laughs> for, uh, yeah. yeah okay um were there any other questions or uh comments on the rest of Chen's report okay Great. Oh, I'll just quickly highlight, we did, um, we received confirmation this week of our successful application for a special collections intern for the museum. Oh, Yay. excellent. Yes. So the job posting went out yeah. today and we are hiring for summer programming students, whether or not we receive the grant funding. I just haven't um, received the confirmation yet through Ontario Summer Jobs. So it's just a waiting game at this point. Because that job went out as well. Yeah. So, yeah. I forwarded that to somebody who's very interested. So. <laughs> okay. Um, then uh, we don't have an, any uh, information, but you were going to give a verbal report on the Ministry of Tourism, Culture, and Sport survey. Yes, so the annual survey for our provincial funding is due at the end of April. It's basically finished already. I just, um, I'm just triple checking the financials. So that'll be submitted on time. Okay, that's great. Um, then any other business? Okay, hearing none, a round yeah, table. I'll just say, just for the record. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be on the board and thoroughly enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. so, We're really happy to have that you. Would be We're very happy to have you. Thank you, Carol. We're thrilled to have you too. Yes. Um. All right. We don't really have any time to do a fulsome roundtable, or at least I don't. Um. Uh. We need to do our key messages. I don't know. Um. If the rest of you wanted to do a roundtable. Uh, are you okay if we skip that this time? Yeah, I think we don't have anything set yet. Okay, all right, key messages. So, what do we want to pull out for communication? Uh, yeah, I'll share my screen in a second. I didn't really touch this but at least you'll have an idea of the format. Oh, 
Oh, you didn't. Oh, this was last month's. It's. I mean, I I deleted some stuff, but. Oh, okay. Um, I'm wondering if maybe we could just ask Jen to do some work on this and send it out to us for comment. I mean, I didn't take notes uh, on this at all this meeting. I mean, some things that popped to mind are, you know, we did a lot of work on the action plan. That was probably the focus of the agenda. Um, we welcome we new, and we maybe welcome a new board member. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and the, maybe a bit of background on Carol. Excited about the cultural map project. Yeah. Yeah, all the mapping, yeah. Collaboration with the town. Um, we uh, um, approved a respectful workplaces policy. Do we want to um, include the fact that um, the, about the being included in the multi-use feasibility study. The CEO is being included. We're very pleased that the CEO of the Blue Mountains Public Library is included in the- Actively yep. engaged. Act mm -hmm. well, include, yeah, as, a, an active, as a committee member. As a yeah. committee member, um, alongside the CEO from the Collingwood Library. I don't, I don't know if we need to say that, but- uh, Oh, that's not it. Maybe not. Just say um, yeah. our CEO is involved, actively involved. That's great. Okay. Do we want to speak to the multi-use um, that sort of a working group to um, finalize our priorities for the multi-use for expansion? Were we going to do it as a whole committee or were we going to do it as a working group? Yeah. Oh, good question. Yeah, because the working group was appointed. Yeah, uh, I would leave it off yet. I mean, I think we haven't, because we haven't done anything. <laughs> yeah. We've just talked about it. Yeah, so leave that for next time. Okay. Um, I would add in here at the end of the, you know, we're planning on meeting in April as a committee to um, refine the work plans, the board and CEO work plans. Yeah, that's good. Did you say meeting in April prior to the April meeting? <laughs> no. Right. So it, yeah. This is an additional April meeting. It's not the 24th. It's not yeah. the third Thursday meeting, I'm assuming. Is yeah. this an additional? No, I think we said we we thought we could have two committee of the holes. I read yeah. somewhere. So is that okay, um, Lori? Do you think to have another committee of the whole in April? Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, okay. um, and we and we maybe is that the time when we're doing any of the volts work? We do, I guess we don't really know. Um, what work? Volt <clears throat> evaluating oh, the like libraries. Said, yeah. Will we have more information to do with that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we don't have to do it. We could do a regular meeting in April and and really handle the the board plan stuff as we did today. That In fact, that might be easier. Let's leave it as a regular meeting. I don't so know. We're just saying, so we're just saying. We have a, we have a timeline to, in terms of delivering the, the um, annual presentation to council. So that involves alignment on the vault numbers. And we have a timeline on our, I'm just going to call it our priorities for library expansion. Mm -hmm. So is April or is a committee meeting in May? If we want to look polished by June. I, and I maybe, feel like the April meeting should be a committee of the whole. Yeah. I, being the new person here, I think we should have a separate meeting to talk about specifically the, the action plans and not deal with the general data, the general delivery of the board and this type of meeting only being at one meeting. That would be my observation. <laughs> okay. Well, and then, to have a walk with the council members and 
evaluating. This is why I said we need that task list because we talked about a lot yeah. of things in today's So, so great, great question. I think that we need to align on our priorities and then part of getting, the you know, that explanation of here's why it would be that walkthrough. Um, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good goal. That, would be that. But that is how we need to prioritize. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You know, so we have so in April, change. our April meeting is a committee of the whole. Sounds like we both did that we in should April. do because of the priority timelines. Is this an addition to the regular meeting? I would vote that it would be two weeks. And I'm and suggesting that we don't one. need a regular meeting. We just do it, do a committee of the whole on, on these specific topics. Because really, in turn is what's coming up in April. We would mm -hmm. we uh we have listed on our annual thing that we would be doing the um Q1 financials. Um, but we also need to do the Q Q4 financials, but they haven't appeared yet. I think probably from from the town. Yeah. yeah. Town, so those yeah. those those will just they'll just flow to whatever meeting we actually start to get those meeting those that information, and then we had the approve the annual report in April, but there's no timeline on that. I mean that's normally that's a video that we prepare annually um, that the, the CEO does, and uh, you know that doesn't have to be an April meeting. So if we have top higher priorities that we want to tackle with and we need to some more general discussion, I would say just make it a um, a regular a committee meeting and then we'll put any other typical board business into May. Yeah, I agree with that. That works for me. Yeah, that would work. If we have core on that committee of the whole week, you can make decisions if needed. Just to let you know, I'm going to be traveling on our next board day. Um, I will see if I can zoom in based on where I am. Okay. But um, but I won't be here. Okay. 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 So those I think so Jen, you'll um draft these and send them out and to yeah. uh I guess Lori and I and we can okay them. Or do you want me to do that, Lori? Why don't you do that, please, Julia? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. So say if you send them out to me, I'm home okay. on Saturday. Okay. Um, all right. So I think then uh, we need a mover, a mover for the key messages in principle. <laughs> um, so can I have a mover? Sean. Okay. Sorry? Sean. John and Lori. Okay. All in favor? Great. Okay. Our next regular meeting then is scheduled for April 18th. That's, so uh, that's not a regular meeting. That's a, that's a sorry, committee. It's a reg, a commit, our next meeting will be a committee of the whole. Um, and our next board meeting is in May, the third Thursday in May. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I would like to move us into closed session. We have no other business will occur um, following the closed session meeting other than uh, uh, adjournment. Um, so uh, I would like a mover for with regard to section 16.14 of the Public Libraries Act that we move into closed session to address matters pertaining to personal um, matters about identifiable individuals. So can I have a mover? Chris. Chris. Chris and seconder? Sean. Sean. Great. Okay. Thank you. Just give me one moment to oh, all in stop favor. the live stream. All in oh, favor? Right. We all yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Better vote. <laughs> <laughs> Carried. Yeah. Carried. Okay. Okay. I will stop the recording.